Carolina, Representative Claiborne, for bringing this bill forward, and I urge uh, support of the legislation, and I yield back. Is there anyone Mr. else Chair? Mr. Uh, Chair? Seeks recognition? Mr. Chair Stauber from Minnesota, I'm not sure if your staff is aware, but it sounds like it appears that anybody that is not on WebEx, they're having technical difficulties and can't hear, just for your information and your staff's information, and I yield back. Very kind, thank you. Uh, is there any further uh, any, any further debate, any further discussion before the amendment process? If not, are there any amendments to the bill? Hearing no uh, amendments, the question is on adopting the bill as uh, adopting the bill and order in favor be reported to the House. I will pause so the members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, I will now pause so the members can uh, oppose can unmute. All those opposed indicate by uh, by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the bill is adopted and ordered favorably reported. Uh, favorably reported. The motion to uh, to reconsider is laid on the table. Thank you. We move to the next uh, uh, Mr. regular chair. Order. Mr. Yes. Chairman. Mr. Western. Uh, under committee rule 5C, I give notice of my intention to file additional or dissenting views on the bill just considered and all bills considered during this markup. And I ask unanimous consent that this notice be extended to all members. Without objection, so ordered, Mr. Weston. Thank you. Uh, we move to the next regular order uh, legislation, HR 1733, uh, sponsored by Mr. Matt Cutright. Uh, from Pennsylvania, the Reclaim Act of 2021. The item, uh, I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources be discharged from further consideration of the bill. And without objection, the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Uh, I will now recognize Representative Lowenthal, the Chairman of the Subcommittee, uh, to speak on the legislation. Mr. Lowenthal, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, I strongly uh, support I strongly support HR 1733 and urge my colleagues to vote yes. HR 1733, the Reclaim Act, will help will help states and tribes address the backlog of over 20,000 high priority abandoned mine land sites while promoting economic development in communities left behind by the coal industry. This bill distributes $1 billion from the AML fund to coal communities over five years. The Reclaim Act emphasizes economic rebirth by funding projects that lead to community development after reclamation. Things like new commercial spaces or parks for recreation that put people back to work in the short and in the long term. Importantly, reclaimed projects will be developed with extensive community input. This challenge of needing to revitalize economies left behind by the fossil fuel industry is not unique to Appalachia or to coal country. Fossil fuel development, uh, fossil fuel dependent communities around the country have lived through generations of boom and bust cycles. We can decide to double down on this pattern or we can create new opportunities, ones that are longer lasting healthier for people, and safer for the environment. Reclaim is one example of how to do that. It is a critical part of upholding our promises to not abandon the people and the communities that help to build this country. I'm proud to be supporting Reclaim, 
and look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to find solutions for workers and communities across the country. Once again, I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this legislation, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Lonthal. Uh, before we consider any amendments, does any other member wish to be recognized on the bill? Yes. It's Westerman, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Westerman, you're recognized. Ranking member is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As, as you and my colleagues, other colleagues are aware of, there are thousands of abandoned coal mines uh, that, uh, from production that occurred uh, long before modern regulations. Many of them present risks to the human health and safety, as well as creating water quality and environmental problems. Leaving them unaddressed presents economic challenges to coal communities as well. Not surprisingly, economic development can be complicated by the presence of environmental or safety hazards. I've always said that conservation and making sure we're good environmental stewards are some of my top priorities for this committee. I'm glad to say that AML reclamation has been a longstanding bipartisan goal here in natural resources. To that end, I appreciate the efforts of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to create HR 1733, also known as the Reclaim Act, which would help accelerate the remediation of abandoned mine lands while stimulating economic growth and development. We all share the same goal here. However, I do have a few concerns with this bill that I believe are necessary to address. Coal mining has provided our country with inexpensive, reliable energy for hundreds of years and continues to be a vital source of baseload power. But like any industry that ex has existed for such a long time, coal mining has seen changes. Technologies have advanced, regional and geologic patterns have shifted, and national and international markets have altered. To make sure that this vital industry and important environmental program on both continue to exceed for years to come, uh, we must have all states and stakeholders have full input in this discussion. The Wyoming delegation in both chambers have introduced a proposal to reauthorize the AML program that also includes provisions to pay down the remaining balance of the AML fund, similar to the Reclaim Act. Sponsored by Congresswoman Cheney in the House, H.R. 2462 represents the input of Wyoming and other relevant parties on this important issue. I look forward to continued negotiations on that bill and hope that we will see productive results for all those affected. And Mr. Chairman, without uh, objection, I'd like to submit this letter of support uh, for the bill sponsored by Representative Cheney. Thank you very much. And um, the ranking member yields. Uh, appreciate his comments and uh, look forward, to, as I know that the sponsor of the legislation looks forward to uh, working with you um, to see if there's points of consensus and uh, can move this legislation along further uh, faster. Uh, thank you for that. I I, uh, I recognize myself. Uh, I support HR 1733, the Reclaim Act, sponsored by my, by our colleague Representative Cartwright. Uh, the legacy of coal mining is is a is a, it's a dual legacy, and uh, uh, Mr. Westerman's words are correct. Uh, uh, it fueled uh, the development and uh, the industry fueled the development and the growth of, uh, of, of this nation. Uh, there is no question uh, about that. But it also has left a legacy that now, I think, uh, is owed to those communities and owed to that, to that uh, contribution and sacrifice uh, the cleanup remediation of those areas, I think, is, is, is part of a legacy that uh, we need to also uh, deal with, too. And this is an important piece of uh, bipartisan legislation. Uh, not only that it send the, uh, the $1 billion of unappropriated money from the AML fund to communities left behind by the coal industry, but it, it would fund coal mine reclamation projects that support communities in diversifying their economies, which is badly needed in those regions creative jobs in both the short and long term. Uh, with this money, we can support a cleaner environment, new jobs, stronger economy, and, and clean up a legacy. Uh, I urge my colleagues to vote yes on the bipartisan bill. And uh, 
ask again, is there anyone else that wishes to speak to the legislation? Uh, as we begin the amendment process, uh, let me recognize Representative Lowenthal. I think you have an amendment designated number one, then you're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me let me get that. It, uh, let me just get all of my. I have an amendment at the desk, Mr. Chair. Recognize, uh, this, sir. Thank you. This amendment will ensure that the Reclaim Act uh, does not unintentionally reduce the amount of funding a state or tribe can set aside for operation and maintenance costs associated with acid mine drainage treatment facilities. With this amendment, H.R. 1733 will also match Senator Manchin's companion version of this legislation. Funding acid mine drainage projects are a meaningful part of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, these projects often significantly improve local water quality and have a long-term benefit of beneficial impacts in communities. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment so that the states and tribes can use reclaimed funds to treat this critical priority and I yield back. Gentlemen yields. Uh any uh, further discussion on Mr. Lowenthal's amendment? Hearing no further discussion then, the question is on Lowenthal amendment number one to the legislation. I will pause for the members in favor can unmute. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Members will please uh, Will mute themselves again. I'll pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please say no. No. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. There's, are there any other amendments to the bill? The question now is on adopting the bill as amended and ordering in favor of reported to the House. I will pause uh, so that members in favor can unmute. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 I will now pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. And the... Bill is adopted as amended and ordered favorably reported to the House and the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Thank you. The item HR 1734 uh, sponsored by uh, Mr. Cartwright from Pennsylvania, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act Amendment Act, Reclamation Act uh, Amendments Act calling uh, I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources be discharged from further consideration of the bill. And without objection, the bill is, is open to amendment at any point. I will now recognize uh, the chair of the subcommittee, Representative Lowenthal, to speak to the legislation. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal, you're recognized. I need one minute to get no my order. All right, everybody take a little break. We're back, we're dealing with 1733, I think. 1734, I think. Yes, 1734, 1734, Mr. Lonto. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I strongly support HR 1734 and urge my colleagues to vote yes. Uh, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act Amendments of 2021 is another bipartisan bill sponsored by our colleagues, Representative Cartwright, that seeks to help the revitalization of coal country. 
For centuries, coal mining um, was the foundation of life in Appalachia. The industry provided union jobs for generations of families. But centuries of poorly regulated coal mining led to tens of thousands of abandoned mines, dangerous and unstable mine shafts, and polluted watersheds running red with contamination from toxic chemicals. In 1977, Congress passed the Surface Mine Control and Reclamation Act, or SMACRA, which created a system to ensure that all new surface coal mines would not leave behind these same scars. SMACRA also established a system for cleaning up mines abandoned before 1977, with coal companies chipping in a small fee per ton of coal mined to fix their industry's legacy of health, safety, and environmental hazards. So far, over $6 billion have been provided to states and tribes across the country to clean up these sites. That's $6 billion of cleaner water, cleaner land, jobs, and economic opportunity. But there is still an estimated uh, um, over $11.4 billion worth of abandoned mines left to reclaim in the United States. By some estimates, that number could be more like $24 billion. The abandoned mine land program has been reauthorized by Congress several times, most recently in 2006, when Congress lowered the fees paid by coal companies by 20%. Unfortunately, the abandoned mine land program is expiring again on September 30th of this year. That leaves just a few months for Congress to pass reauthorization. We need to reauthorize the abandoned mine land fee at its current levels and certainly no lower so that we can continue providing coal country with the investments it needs and deserves. With coal in decline and record numbers of companies filing for bankruptcy, places like Appalachia are being left behind with devastating environmental degradation, polluted drinking water, and chronic health impacts. Workers need new jobs and opportunities, and they need them now. Reauthorizing the AML fund will help revitalize regions of the country hit hardest by the coal industry's downturn. This bill will help create good jobs and a safer, healthier environment. I once again want to urge my colleagues to vote yes on this legislation, and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Uh, before we consider amendments, anyone else which wish to speak on the legislation? Mr. Chairman, it's Westerman. Mr. Ranking member, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the issue of abandoned coal mines unfortunately continues to affect states across the country. Remediating them will remove health and safety hazards from the landscape and create opportunities for employment and economic development all at the same time. H.R. 1734 would reauthorize the fee to fund the abandoned mine lands program and its current level for 15 years. I agree with my colleagues about the need to continue this program, but we must balance our remediation goals with the ongoing success of the coal industry. Most importantly, it is vital that all states and relevant parties have a seat at the table as we consider reauthorization. Abandoned land mines, or abandoned mine lands exist in states from east to west, but historic and modern coal mining trends have affected these regions in different ways. This is one of the elements of this program that we need to be cognizant of. Also, it is important to remember that the AML fund is paid for by fee on current operators. The modern coal industry did not cause these historic AML sides. 
some of them hundreds of years old, but they are now responsible for funding the cleanup. The energy mix in the United States has changed over time. And if we want the good uh, work under the AML fund to continue, we need to make sure that coal operators are able to conduct their businesses in an economically sustainable manner. Take all of these elements into account. Congresswoman Cheney has introduced a proactive alternative proposal. Her bill, H.R. 2462, would reauthorize the AML program for a period of seven years with a fee 40% below the current level. The provisions in H.R. 2462 are meant to ensure healthy coal production in the United States well into the future, supporting jobs as well as continued funding for this program. Congresswoman Cheney's bill has a Senate companion sponsored by Senator Barrasso. As much as I understand the position of my colleagues from Pennsylvania, I strongly believe that a true compromise must fully take into account the position of all parties. I would like to submit the testimony of Todd Parfit, the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality uh, Director for the record. Without objections, so ordered. Now, with that in mind, I will respectfully oppose H.R. 1734 today with the understanding that further negotiations should take place between the states and other interested parties. I believe that with the delegations working together, we can find a long lasting sustainable path forward for this important federal program. I urge a no vote and I yield back. Gentleman yields. Uh, is there any further de debate before we uh, go into the amendment process? Someone seeks to be recognized. Hearing none, uh, hearing none at this point, I will hand the gavel over to uh, Representative uh, Lowenthal for the amendment process. Uh, Mr. Lowenthal. Thank you, Chair. Representative yeah. Graves, you have an amendment designated yeah. as number 87, and I reserve a point of order. Uh, you're recognized for five minutes, Chairman, uh, uh, Representative Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I want to be careful about uh, contradicting any any uh, comments of the opening, uh, excuse me, opening comments of the ranking member. Um, but but I, I do want to say in regard to the base text of the bill, I, I actually do see a relationship between um, fees that are being paid in from current mining operations and some of the historic impacts that were done with early mining. So let me let me just be clear in regard to the base text here. I, I actually think that there is a relationship, and I want to I want to briefly explain. Um, some of the early mining operations actually took place out out east in in West Virginia and Virginia and. Uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, as I recall, uh, some of those states. And what happened is as they worked to perfect mining operations, um, uh, the, the the states in the West that later began uh, mining, they were able to benefit from those efforts out East. And so I, I, I don't know that I would say that there's no relationship or we should sever the relationship between historic and ongoing mining operations. I think you can make an argument that, again, Ongoing operations have benefited from some of the technology from, from earlier operations, and I think that's worth a, a discussion. And I know that Congresswoman Cheney has a bill that, again, it doesn't sever that, that relationship. Um, so I just want to make that point in regard to the bill. In regard to our amendment, what, what this bill does is that it actually releases sequestered funds. As a result, of Budget Control Act funds are sequestered, and, and this bill releases those. Well, Mr. Chairman, there are similar funds in other programs under our jurisdiction that are similarly sequestered. And that includes funds that is that is dedicated um, <clears throat> to uh, coastal resiliency, to hurricane protection. And so our amendment simply uh, releases those funds as well and just says that those funds can be released to ensure the, the resiliency and sustainability of our coastal communities and ecosystem uh, through hurricanes, floods, and other, other disasters. And so that's what our amendment does. I would urge adoption and yield back. <clears throat> uh, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Graves. I'm now gonna uh, recognize myself. Well, I appreciate Mr. Graves' goals to increase GoMesa funds. Um, we believe this this amendment, no, we, we believe this amendment 
is not germane to this bill uh, and does not belong in H.R. 1734. This bill, what we're talking about, is one that strikes a, a thoughtful bipartisan compromise that gives us the best chance to move it out of committee and to be enacted into law. But Representative Graves, I'm, you have raised this issue before. I do appreciate your raising this issue, and I look forward to working with you on this issue at a later date. Uh, will the gentleman yield? Yes, I will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when I was shaking my head no, I just want to be clear that th this is not any desire to, 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 to raise or increase the amount of Go Mesa funds. As, as you know, just like this bill, it takes sequestered funds that under law are dedicated to this program. S similarly, this is sequestered funds from Go Mesa. And, and so this isn't increasing funds. It's simply taking funds that are currently sequestered and releasing them, just like the base text of this bill does. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm just 20 more seconds. I, I do just want to say that this is probably about the 12th time that in, in recent months or within the last year that I've raised issues in regard to investments and resiliency of our coastal communities and revenue sharing. And I've heard over and over and over again that, that the majority wants to work with us, but we have seen zero action. Mr. Chairman, I remind you, we had seven named hurricanes, seven named hurricanes that impacted our state just last year. This is going to result in billions and billions of dollars in federal taxpayer funds. It has been proven over and over again that the better approach is to make proactive investments. And I appreciate you coming down to actually see that firsthand. Yield back. Thank you, Ms. Representative Graves. Rep uh, Representative Graves, are you willing to withdraw your amendment because of germaneness? Uh, Mr. Chairman, with a with a, a sincere commitment from your side to to work with us on this, uh, I will I will withdraw the amendment. But but I, I've heard lip service uh, for for many many months now, and and meanwhile we have victims. Uh, we have we have uh, thousands of flooded folks right now right now that that these funds could be if released could be working to address. Thank you, thank you, and we will commit working with you. I, I ask you to have to consent to withdraw the amendment. All right. Chair Lorenzal? Chair Lorenzal? Yes. Bob Stauber out of Minnesota. Would uh, Chair Grijalva allow me to uh, speak in opposition to the underlying bill? I was uh, a little slow at the pickup here. Uh, the gavel is yours, Mr. Lowenthal. Yes, Mr. Stauber, you can speak in opposition to the underlying you, bill. Uh, we are now talking about amendments, so try to be brief. I will. Thank you. I rise today seeking compromise on reauthorizing, uh, reauthorizing the fee paid on coal by producers. Extraction has been a safer process that is now not for coal producing states, states most robust in carbon providing service to low prices. Unlike uh, the dishonest picture painted by some activist group, America leads the world in emission reductions. Yes, we have scars from the past, but modern coal production has advanced with technological leaps. The fact of the matter is that coal is currently and will remain a cr crucial piece of our uh, economy. Our grid, the Midwest Independent Systems Operator, relies on coal and natural gas for more than 60% of our energy use, dwarfing any other source. Meanwhile, coal coming from the West is second, only contaminated in commodity shipped through the Duluth Superior Harbor, the largest freshwater port in the world shared between my district and my colleague Tom Tiffany from Wisconsin. Reauthorization at the current level and for 15 years ignores the needs of coal producing states with further technological advancement underway. Let's reauthorize for seven years and reevaluate then instead of arbitrarily locking ourselves in for a decade and a half. September's deadline is looming, whether it be Montana, Pennsylvania, Wyoming, West Virginia, North Dakota, or Kentucky. Let's find a solution that works across ge geography, chamber, and party. For that reason, I oppose the bill before us today, but I look forward to working with the bill sponsors, committee members, and the Senate to find a solution that works for today's producers to continue healing yesterday's scars. Thank you, and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stava. Again, that was about the general debate on the bill, not an amendment. And I'm going to ask if there are any other amendments on this bill. Hearing none, 
I will hand the gavel back to Chair Rahal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lowenthal. And uh, to Mr. Graves, I think the, the whole issue of releasing sequestered funds uh, within our jurisdiction it, it, it is a concept that I, I think merits some, some real discussion uh, and, and, and how and, and what, what the criteria for releasing would be and how it would be used. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I appreciate you bringing that up again. And uh, Mr. Lowenthal has indicated he'll follow up on that and, uh, and he will. Uh, he's, he's said that before and uh, I think that it merits looking at. Thank you. Uh, the question is on adopting the bill as, 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 uh, and ordering it favorably reported to the House. Uh, at this point, I will pause uh, so that members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, members opposed will please unmute. And all those opposed, please indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the bill is adopted and ordered favorably reported uh, <coughs> to the House. The, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We're now calling up uh, and reading the measure HR 2415, uh, offered by Representative Ledger Fernandez. I ask unanimous consent the Subcommittee on Energy and mineral resources be discharged from further consideration of the bill. And without objection, this bill will be considered as read and open to amendment. And I recognize the sponsor of the legislation, Representative Ledger Fernandez, to speak on the legislation. You recognize it? Thank you so much, Chair Grijalva. Um, ARP and RALS pose a serious threat to both our communities and the climate. They can leak toxic fluids into our water and pollutants into our atmosphere, including heat trapping gas methane. The negative impact of methane is because it is at least 28 to 36 times, yes, 36 times more powerful in trapping heat than carbon dioxide over 100 years. There are over 700 orphaned rails in my home state of New Mexico. Countless more are identified as sitting idle and at risk of becoming orphaned and abandoned. I've been to those rail sites. My former tribal clients have orphaned rails on their lands, as do my friends and my neighbors. At these rails, your mouth can taste the metal in the air and you can see the stains around the reed prone deteriorated rail pads. Because there's no liable owner, the federal government uh, through this bill is stepping up to plug and reclaim the rails to protect our environment. Step in now before it costs billions more to clean up drinking water supplies or respond to bigger climate disasters, as our good friend from Louisiana just noted. <coughs> but we should also take steps to make sure companies live up to their legal obligation to plug an abandoned well so we're not creating more orphans in the future. Um, we... Uh, we heard about the negative impacts and the need to holistically address orphan wells during an energy and mineral, mineral resources subcommittee hearing earlier this year. The Orphan Well and Cleanup Jobs Act would make a significant investment in cleanup of orphan wells on federal, state, private, and tribal lands, incentivize states to improve their state policy in controlling methane in orphan wells, and help prevent a new batch of orphaned and abandoned wells by increasing the federal bonding rate and establishing a fee on a idle wells on public lands. Specifically, it authorizes $7.25 billion for cleanup on state and private lands, $5 billion of which is with no strings attached, while the remainder is meant to incentivize state action. It's got $700 million for cleanup on public and tribal lands and $50 million for research and development so we can develop novel methods and technologies to better identify and plug the orphaned wells we find across this country. 
That's why this bill is supported by the New Mexico Energy, Minerals, and Natural Resources Department, nearly 50 environmental organizations, including the National Wildlife Federation, Environmental Defense Fund, and the Sierra Club, as well as tribal organizations like the All Public Council of Governors and the United South and Eastern Tribes Sovereignty Protection Fund. This bill is also aligned with President Biden's American Jobs Plan, which calls for $16 billion to plug orphaned and gas wells and clean up abandoned mines. And this is a jobs bill. It's estimated that cleaning 500,000 wells will generate 120,000 jobs. These jobs utilize similar high skill workers as we see in, um, in presently in oil and gas. And the state discretionary grants include a formula to take account lost jobs. And the reporting requirements include telling us how many jobs have been created under this bill. So this bill reflects my belief that as we address climate change, we must not leave behind those communities that fuel the power and progress of America. During the past year, thousands of oil and gas workers in New Mexico and across the country were put out of work. The investments in this bill would provide a meaningful and immediate opportunity to generate union jobs for fossil fuel workers and in the rural communities they call home. The bill is a critical first step toward addressing the climate crisis and investing in our rural legacy fossil fuel communities. I urge my colleagues to support the bill and yell back. Thank you, General Lady Yields. Uh, before we consider any amendments, uh, does any other member wish to be recognized on, on, on the legislation? Yes, Mr. Chair, I wish to be recognized. Mr. Lowenthal, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I strongly support Representative Ledger Fernandez's legislation, H.R. 2415. It is a critical bill that will help states and federal land managers clean up the tens of thousands of orphaned oil and gas wells scattered across the country. When companies walk away from unprofitable wells or go bankrupt and have not posted an adequate bond to pay for the cleanup, wells become orphaned. Landowners and taxpayers are then forced to deal with the hazardous and polluting sites that fossil fuel industry has left behind. For, for example, in my home state of California, there are over 5,500 orphan wells and, all, and also wells that are at high risk of becoming orphaned with a now an estimated cleanup price tag exceeding half a billion dollars or $500 million. These wells release methane, they contaminate groundwater and gas leaks and, have, and, the, and the gas leaks have led to explosions uh, and forced evacuations in a number of states, including Colorado, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. H.R. 2415 would help us to solve our nation's orphan well problems while creating good paying jobs. As the author has said, this is about good paying jobs. The bill authorizes $8 billion over 10 years to plug and reclaim orphan wells on public, tribal, state, and privately owned lands. And the bill strengthens regulations on public lands to prevent future orphan wells, or at least to keep taxpayers from having to foot the bill again. The Biden administration understands the potential of this program to help employ oil and gas workers, which is why the administration is calling on Congress to invest billions of dollars in this precise type of work when it released the American Jobs Plan in April. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of this legislation and I urge my colleagues to support HR 2450 and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen yields, uh, anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman <coughs> Westerman. Mr. Ranking Member, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm opposed to this bill in its current form. And I regret that once again, we've got an issue that is a, uh, a bipartisan issue and it's been derailed by the majority 
on this committee. Cleaning up orphaned oil and gas wells is definitely a bipartisan topic, and we've had a real opportunity here to come together in a bipartisan manner to restore our environment and put Americans back to work. However, uh, the majority has dismissed our request for bipartisanship and included several provisions that oil and gas producing states oppose and which would, again, jeopardize American jobs. I must also note that, this, that a bipartisan bill currently introduced in the Senate, sponsored by Senators Luan and Kramer, it is similar to this legislation, but it doesn't have the bipartisan or the partisan provisions in it, excuse me. The Senate bill is an example of bipartisan cooperation, and I ask our colleagues to consider this approach rather than the partisan legislation that would obviously be dead on arrival in the Senate. In fact, I would like to uh, submit a letter of support uh, for the bipartisan bill out of the Senate from a group of 12 bipartisan governors, including uh, the governor of New Mexico, uh, Governor Lewan Grisham. Without a Without objection, Mr. Westerman, it's so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Specifically, I'm concerned that H.R. 2415 ties orphan well grants to unrelated regulatory requirements. Requiring overly stringent methane regulations has nothing to do with plugging abandoned wells, and funding should not be contingent upon uh, such a requirement. This bill also arbitrarily increases bonding requirements and eliminates certain bonding mechanisms. Such arbitrary changes will undoubtedly have an impact on small operators who are already struggling to recover from the economic downturn. The oil and gas industry was hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many hardworking men and women were left without a job and very, in a very uncertain time for our nation. Unfortunately, the Biden administration uh, has doubled down on this, and they've chosen to increase the uncertainty facing those who depend on the energy sector for their livelihood. By canceling the Keystone XL pipeline, okay. placing an indefinite moratorium on oil and gas leasing, and creating administrative bottlenecks for permits on existing leases, the administration has jeopardized thousands of jobs across the country. I agree that we should focus on getting these hardworking men and women back on the job, but this bill will jeopardize such efforts as it's currently written. This bill includes several partisan elements that do more to advance the goals of environmental extremist groups than the workers in rural communities. If we are serious about fixing the problem of orphaned wells and stimulating rural economies that are hit hard by the pandemic, we should remove these partisan provisions and focus on putting our energy sector back to work and ensuring responsible environmental stewardship in the process. I oppose this bill and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on the legislation? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair Stauber, Mr. Minnesota. Gentle lady is recognized. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I rise to speak in opposition of this legislation. There is bipartisan consensus that cleaning up thousands of orphan wells across the country should be a priority, and members in both houses of Congress are working towards bipartisan legislation to address these issues. Unfortunately, though, this bill before us today is not a bipartisan solution, and it only seeks to continue these committees, this committee's crusade against the oil and gas industry. Included in this bill are provisions that have nothing to do with reclaiming orphan wells and provisions that impose new and unnecessary regulations on producers. The bill withholds states who wish to take advantage of grant funds to clean up orphan wells hostage by requiring them to implement costly regulations on methane emissions, idle wells, and bonding reform, which would in turn cause more companies to go out of business and create more orphan wells. In fact, when the Energy and Mineral Resources Subcommittee held a hearing on this legislation last month, I asked Tom Kropach, an independent regul regulator from Wyoming Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, about the effect these regulations would have on small oil and gas producers. His response to the committee was that these regulations would create more orphan wells because small producers do not have the same capital as larger producers, and they would not be able to meet these new bonding requirements. In addition, he added that these regulations could result in producers deciding to plug existing wells 
therefore causing states to lose out on jobs, royalty payments, tax revenues, which have the which would have a direct negative impact on essential services like public education and other infrastructure projects in states like New Mexico, all while the country loses out on a needed source of energy. These excessive regulations would build on the efforts of the Biden administration to make producing on federal lands less attractive by the day, which is especially troublesome, troublesome for my state where 67% of natural gas production and 52% of oil production occurs on federal lands. This accounts for 31% and 57% of national production on federal lands, respectively. Oil and gas has been produced in the United States for over a century, and many of the orphaned wells that exist today were abandoned decades ago before modern regulations came into being. I believe this committee should be empowering states to take the lead on cleaning up orphan wells that exist within their borders, but instead this bill would coerce states into adopting regulations that would be harmful to them over the long term. In addition, producers in my district stand ready to work with states and regulators to clean up the legacy of the past, but by imposing cumbersome This committee continues to move legislation forward that further cripples our energy industry at a time when gas prices are at their highest level in America since Joe Biden was last in office in 2014. Instead of pushing developers, let's grow jobs. Instead of continuing to drive up the cost of living in America, let's use our domestic energy supply. I oppose this legislation and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on the legislation? Mr. Chairman, Rep. Soto. Yeah, who wishes to be recognized? Soto. Oh, Mr. Soto, please. Will you recognize, sir? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I thank uh, Rep. Uh, Lesser Fernandez for presenting this great bill. Orphan wells contribute to climate change long after their industrial usefulness. They need to be plugged up. 
which is why I support this bill to combat climate change and to create new jobs in the process. I'm hearing a lot of chicken little crisis uh, chat today. Just as a headline, the Colonial Pipeline is back up and running and gap, gas prices have dropped in Florida. So where's the crisis? Today, I also heard from our friends across the aisle that we need to invest in resiliency in the southeast. In Florida, we know the effects of intensifying hurricanes and rising seas caused by climate change. Uh, so I agree, we need to address this before the storm hits. Uh, but I guess some of you have missed a big headline this week. Uh, in short, the Biden administration is working to do just that, to boost infrastructure resiliency and preparedness in the Southeast. President Biden announced this past Monday that he was doubling the amount of money that the U.S. government will spend helping communities to set extreme weather, to prepare for extreme weather events, proclaiming the need for full readiness as he visited government workers and told them to prepare for another season of natural disasters. In announcing the $1 billion in spending, Biden also emphasizes administration's attempts to steer the country towards confronting looming effects of climate change, which scientists say will make severe weather events more frequent and less predictable. This includes a new NASA-led effort um, by Florida's own uh, administrator, Bill Nelson, uh, and he's also mobilized the administration to respond to weather-related instances across the South, including holding calls with several governors in the Southeast, including Republican governors, and has delivered FEMA relief with urgency after these last uh, tornadoes that we saw. Last week, the president also signed an executive order instructing executive agencies to identify and disclose perils that a warming world poses to federal programs, assets, and liabilities, while also requiring federal suppliers to reveal their own climate-related risks. Uh, lastly, the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program will help communities prepare in advance for hurricanes, wildfires, and other natural disasters, including 40% uh, towards communities uh, that are disadvantaged. Uh, so I just want to make sure that the committee is fully informed. We are proactively preparing in advance, uh, and we need to work together to continue to do so. And I yield back. Mr. Chairman Graves, Louisiana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Soto. Uh, Mr. Graves, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, wow. Okay, first of all, I, I, I want to... Um, Make note of a few things. Our, our former colleagues in the House of Representatives, Mr. Kramer and Mr. Lujan, do uh, have bipartisan legislation they've been working on demonstrating that there is bipartisan consensus on, on addressing abandoned or, or orphan wells. Uh, it's an issue in, in our state in addition to many others. Um, and so I want to be clear that, that I am game, I am in, just like Ranking Member Westerman noted, uh, like Congresswoman Harrell noted. Uh, to to work with you all and trying to come to a bipartisan consensus on on what this legislation should look like. Uh, number two, and something that that Congresswoman Harold noted, and, and we can't let this pass. This is a really important issue. This committee cannot and should not, uh, in markup after markup, impose more restrictions, more regulations, more red tape, more bureaucracy on energy production in the United States. Because all that does is further increase the number of orphaned or abandoned wells as producers, as, as the end zone, the, the line is, is, is continually moved. It prevents producers from being able to economically be able to produce energy in the United States. So then we go uh, into this issue of creating a cycle where we're causing the abandoned uh, wells or orphan wells that this bill is designed to, protect, uh, to, to address. This doesn't make sense. Now, let's go to Mr. Soto's comments. If Mr. Soto was suggesting that instead of us actually investing in resiliency, we instead need to work on reducing emissions, uh, I remind this committee, because it is important that we act with fact, uh, that, that even the most aggressive climate models show that that, that if we take extraordinary actions in the United States and reduce emissions today to zero, that for the next 10 years, the next 20 years, the next 30 years, the next 50 years, the next 70 years, we're going to continue to see sea rise. We're going to continue to see the impacts on our communities. So if, if anyone is suggesting that we trade 
trying to reduce emissions today in the United States for resiliency investments. I would strongly urge that we have experts come in and actually advise this committee on what makes sense. Um, let me also talk about, as I heard comments about this administration doing an extraordinary job on resilience. Let me remind this committee and this Congress that the, the highest investment that we've made in resiliency wasn't made during a, a Democrat administration. It was made during President Trump. It was made with a Republican House and a Republican Senate. That was the high watermark. That was the record level of funding invested in resiliency. Now, last, let's go back to the, to the climate change issue. On the climate change issue, I've heard this celebrated agreement, the Paris Accords, this celebrated agreement, and I do commend Secretary Kerry for engaging internationally on climate change. This celebrated agreement results in an increase in global emissions. That's not moving the ball in the right direction. It gives China a free pass to continue increasing emissions another 50 percent, another 50 percent over the next 10 years. And this is while China today releases more emissions than all developed countries combined. This is the wrong direction. It simply makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in closing, I've got a number of amendments that address uh, a number of the issues that, that, that Ranking Member Westerman brought up. And I look forward to, to having discussion on those amendments and hope we can find some bipartisan consensus on some of those. Uh, with that, I'll yield back. Jim. Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing none, I want, I'll recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, I, I strongly support this legislation that uh, my friend from New Mexico, Representative Ledger Fernandez, introduced. Uh, I'm a firm believer that that we need to move things forward. Sometimes too incrementally, but nevertheless moving forward. And I think. Uh, you know, we're, we're going through a process on this committee and to some extent uh, uh, in uh, at, at all levels is, is the process of, uh, and this committee is that we're trying uh, moving to create the balance necessary uh, between an extraction only uh, philosophy that has dominated uh, policy at the administrative level uh, for four years uh, versus one in, in which we Look at environmental protection and corrective actions uh, that are going that are necessary, and I think this is one of those corrective actions that are necessary. To say that, uh, yeah, I think, and I I think it's appropriate uh, to keep the growth of future for orphan wells uh, from happening, and and that requires uh, bonding and regulatory uh, uh, re uh, stronger requirements uh, for decades. These Weak bond requirements have allowed oil and gas companies to walk away from their wells and leave taxpayers on the hook. Uh, the 60,000 orphan wells that are spread across this country and potentially many more that we don't know about yet uh, need to be dealt with. Uh, these polluting wells, hazards, leaks uh, from those sites, contaminated groundwater, uh, they, they pose significant public health risks uh, to communities where where they're located and adjacent to those communities. Uh, H.R. 2415 would authorize $8 billion to help clean up polluting wells and create tens of thousands of good jobs in the short term and in the long term. Uh, the proposal is, uh, I think, a win for working folk, uh, for communities, and for the environment. That's why uh, President uh, Biden included it in his uh, American Jobs Plan. Uh, H.R. 2415 would be also strengthen uh, uh, those bonding requirements on public lands for the first time since the Eisenhower administration. Uh, reforming bonding and charging fees on oil wells is not about punishing oil and gas. It is about increasing bond amount to protect taxpayers from an industry that consistently expects the public to clean up the mess. Uh, the idle well fees discourage companies from ignoring their polluting inactive sites on public land and makes them deal with remediation uh, before they walk away. Uh, I want to thank the, the representative for introducing this, uh, the legislation, and I would urge my uh, colleagues to support it. Uh, any further uh, debate on the uh, 
on the legislation uh, without uh, Let's begin the amendment part without objection. An ANS offered by Representative Ledger Fernandez is considered as read and open to amendment at any point. I will now uh, hand the gavel over to uh, Representative uh, Lowenthal for the amendment process. Mr. Lowenthal, recognize. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Ledger Fernandez, you have the first amendment designated as number one. You are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Chair Lowenthal. So this amendment is about supporting good paying union jobs right here in America. In hearings and markups, I've heard my colleagues on the other side of the aisle consistently raise that we should be supporting U.S. industry and building things right here at home. While this amendment requires just that. It would require the steel, iron, and other materials that are used in the plugging and reclamation of oil and gas wells that would receive funds under this bill to be made right here in America. Rather than letting companies import steel or other materials from cheap overseas markets, we should be using taxpayer dollars to support U.S. manufacturing and U.S. jobs. I urge my colleagues to support the amendment, and I yield back. Is there further discussion on this amendment? Mr. Chairman, Ms. Westerman. You will recognize Mr. Westerman, uh, Ranking Member Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you to the gentlelady for uh, putting this amendment out. I rise in support of this amendment. I think it's a, a good idea that we make things here at home and make it with U.S. Uh, produced resources. But, Mr. Chairman, I believe this amendment also highlights uh, something that we've been talking about. And I would just ask the question, where are we going to get the U.S. steel and iron products to go uh, into these projects? Uh, they just don't appear magically. And if we continue to do withdrawals and not allow these products or resources to be developed uh, here in the U.S., uh, we simply won't have the supply to do that. And I think it goes to a larger question, not only uh, steel products and iron that will be needed in these uh, well cleanups, but as we look at a, uh, a growing economy and we see the increased demands on copper and other critical minerals, uh, we should be looking at not just the fact that we can say we want to build things in America with American resources, but how are we going to get those resources? Uh, because, like I said before, they don't just appear magically. Uh, we've got to have mine development. We've got to do it sustainably. We've got to do it environmentally friendly, like we can do better than any place in the world. And, uh, you know, I think this is a small step in the right direction. Uh, I encourage support of this amendment, and I yield back. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Mr. Stauber? Chair, Lowenth Chair Lowenthal Stauber here. May, may yes. I have comments? Yeah. I'd like to just uh, comment on uh, Congresswoman Fernandez's amendment. You are recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much. Congresswoman Fernandez, excellent, excellent uh, amendment. I totally agree with you. I'm hoping that same thought process of employing American jobs follows in the expansion of iron mining in northern Minnesota, critical minerals mining in northern Minnesota, where we have private labor, thousands of union workers, critical minerals to help supply our alternative sources of energy like wind and solar. So I'm absolutely looking forward to your support as we move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ranking Member. Is there um, any other further discussion on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question now is on the Ledger Fernandez Amendment Number One. I'm going to pause so that members can. Members in favor can unmute. All those in favor say aye. 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 
Bye. 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 Members will please mute themselves again. I'm going to pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please say no. 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 Thank you. Members will please mute again. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed upon. We are going to now move on to Representative Harrell. You have the next amendment designated also as number one. You are recognized for five minutes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a straightforward amendment that would strike the section of the bill containing language that increases bonding requirements on producers operating on federal lands. As I stated in my opening remarks, the Energy and Mineral Resources Subcommittee, when discussing this legislation last month, heard from independent regulators that increasing the bonding requirements would cause small producers to go out of business, create more orphan wells, and could result in existing wells being plugged. This makes this argument for this bill a contradiction, as you cannot claim this bill creates jobs while also putting companies out of business and eliminating the jobs of the people they employ. The facts are the majority of the orphaned wells that exist today became orphaned decades ago before our modern environmental laws came into existence. Reclamation of extraction sites is now a hallmark of oil and gas development and producers work diligently with states to ensure that the land is restored to its natural state once production is finished. And as my colleague mentioned in March, I took three of my colleagues down to an oil producing county they were able to witness firsthand the arduous work that is done to restore natural landscapes once these wells are finished. Rising the bonding requirements would simply punish those who adhere to their reclamation responsibilities for the sins of a few modern day bad apples and producers from over a century ago. This section of the bill is also unnecessary as the Department of Interior already has the authority to, rise, to raise bonding requirements if they choose to. Instead of focusing on an antiquated process like bonding, Congress should be focused on finding ways to incorporate more modern forms of financing that can both address the legacy orphan well issue and prevent orphan wells from occurring in the future. I am committed to working with my colleagues to find a bipartisan way forward to address orphan well cleanup in my state and in the other uh, and in other current and former uh, producing states. However, I believe that the inclusion of the language that increases bonding requirements on producers would further exacerbate the orphan well cleanup problem we currently face. I'm asking my colleagues to support my amendment and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Harrell. Uh, is there any further discussion on the Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. That, all right. The uh, and and speaking uh, uh, regarding the amendment. You are My recognized to speak on the amendment. My colleague's amendment to strike all of Section 3 would remove the bill's provisions related to federal bonding, which is actually critically important to prevent future orphaned oil and gas wells on our public lands. You know, at the hearing on this bill, we heard from a rancher and former bondsman from New Mexico, Don Schreiber. Um, he noted, well, the cost of a pickup truck had gone from roughly 2000 in 1950 to 40000 plus today, the amount for federal plugging bond remained at exactly the same amount, $10,000. It hasn't been adjusted in seven years. For those who have been involved in the real estate market, imagine a house that might have sold for $10,000 or possible in 1950, that it would not have the same selling price now. It is actually now more expensive to plug wells than it was before. Um, uh, so... These deeper and more complex wells uh, are more expensive to plug. We've heard testimony and reviewed examples of plugging costs that exceed 500,000. Um, I also want to know that 
In a recent study commissioned by the New Mexico State Land Office, we found that the total cost of closure and cleanup of the oil and gas infrastructure located on state trust and private lands in New Mexico is $8.3 billion. Now compare that $8.3 billion to what is actually set as bonds. That is $201 million. So there is an $8 billion gap. That tells you the extent of how our failure to amend the bonds as time has gone on has created the system which allows uh, oil and gas to walk away. And it's not just a few bad ap apples. In uh, Louisiana, there are almost 4,000 orphan wells. In Wyoming, there are 3,000. And these are very likely conservative estimates because there are many more who um, uh, uh, that have not been counted in my bill actually would provide the resources to go out and identify orphaned wells. Um, so while I appreciate my colleagues' concern for our state's oil and gas industry, we need to recognize that my state would benefit greatly by setting the standard for bonds at a level that comes closer to what is needed to actually plug and reclaim the wells. And I want to remind uh, my colleagues that this is not a partisan issue. To say that asking an oil and gas operator to live up to its legal obligation is not a Republican or a Democratic matter. That should be simply a matter of law. The operator has a legal obligation to plug the valve. But because these bonds are too low, it's too easy for them to walk away. So if we allow a system to continue to go on, which creates these orphan wells, we are going to be in the same position five years from now, another five years from now, another five years from now. We must act to make sure that we um, set up the bond at a rates that make sense to plug. I want to also note that at that markup, we received comments from the Southern Ute tribe in a letter, and it said, the Southern Ute tribe, which has a lot of oil and gas, I quote, the need to increase financial assurance requirements for public lands and for Indian lands can hardly be questioned. So these examples demonstrate why it's just common sense to make sure that the federal government increases its bonding requirements on it's our public lands. These are our lands to meet modern standards. I urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mr. Rank, Mr. Rank, Ranking Member uh, Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rank, I, does. Thank you. I, I support this uh, amendment by Representative Harrell because it strikes language from the bill that's partisan language, it's unnecessary language, and it uh, takes away an issue that is really not an issue at all because the current bonding system works. We're seeing less than 0.3% of wells abandoned under the current bonding system today. So again, this is an, uh, an attempt to punish uh, producers today who are being responsible, who are uh, having the adequate bonding, and they're not abandoning wells now. And it's trying to punish them for others' deeds of the past, not to minimize the, uh, the issue that we need to address orphaned wells that are there, but we do not need to put that on the backs of today's producers. Not only does this increase bonding rates, it also eliminates a tool for nationwide bonding. Uh, which is contrary to uh, trying to achieve the objective. Uh, we shouldn't be putting um, you know, bad restrictions on a program uh, that's already working. On top of all of that, uh, this language was not included in the Luan Kramer bill, which again, is got, it's got bipartisan support in the Senate. I believe it could have bipartisan support in the House. And it's got bipartisan support from governors in oil producing states, including Governor Luan Grisham, who is our former colleague uh, here in the House, who's the governor of New Mexico now. So if we want to really make this bill bipartisan and we want to make it effective, we should accept the gentlelady's amendment. I urge support of it and I yield back. Thank you, Rank Ranking Member Westerman. Is, is there uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Chairman, Graves, Louisiana. Pardon? Graves, Louisiana. Graves. 
Representative Grace and Representative Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I just um, was going to make a couple of the points that, that that Mr. Westman did. Look, we don't need to just be looking at what is the inflation rate and how is it adjusted today. It's about the success of the program. And as the ranking member just noted, a fraction of a percent of wells today under today's standards are actually uh, abandoned or orphaned. And and I, I want to we, we've got to focus on this. If we're going to start looking at, oh, well, how does this adjust for inflation and what have you? Uh, why don't we take a look at the regulatory burden and how that is adjusted for inflation just between last year and this year? And with all of these additional regulations that this administration is putting in place that this bill would force um, to be put in place, some of which I even really scratch my head on how it could possibly be under our, our committee's jurisdiction. Um, you know, and, and also I think you've got to you've got to look not just holistically at the cost of complying with regulations, but also look at the dollars that are being collected today. For example, there was a recent analysis by the New Mexico Tax and Research Institute, and it found in a nine state analysis, a nine state analysis that the state of New Mexico actually received more money from oil and gas operations than any of the other states. And just in, I believe it was 2019 alone, the state collected $3 billion. I mean, I, I asked the chairman, Mr. Chairman, or perhaps the amendment sponsor, how was this $3 billion used? Did you use any of this to address the, the orphan or abandoned wells? Where is all this money going? Because I'll tell you, our state doesn't get $3 billion. Um, I, I, I know we don't. And and, and these other states, they, they, we're not getting the mineral leasing act revenue sharing dollars that you're getting. Uh, Wyoming and, and New Mexico by far exceed all of the other states because many of us are treated in a, in a disparate manner. We're, we're, there, there's a prejudice or a bias against us. And so, you know, look, I, I think that if we're going to look holistically, let's look holistically. But I think that the general, the gentlewoman from from New Mexico, this amendment in this case is the right amendment uh, to to um, uh, the right amendment to, to to put this back in perspective. And as the ranking member said, recognizing that that this is a solution in search of a problem. Uh, yield back. Mr. Lowenthal? Yes, thank you. Is there, who else would like to address? Mr. Stauber, you're recognized for five minutes on the Harrell Amendment. Thank you, Chair Lowenthal. And I uh, rise to support my colleague's amendment. And at this point, I would like to yield the remainder Mr. of Stauber, my time. Mr. Stauber, I, I rise in support of the amendment, and at this time, I'd like to yield the rest of my time to uh, the uh, my colleague, Yvette Harrell. He, he, okay, he looks like he's not there right now. Representative. Um, thank you. Thank you. Harrell. Oh, yeah. I recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to reiterate what my um, what my colleagues are saying. I mean, this is a problem. Uh, I mean, a solution in terms of a, a looking for a, a problem. This is critical because what we're doing is we're we're hog tying our small producers. And as as uh, Congressman Graves just mentioned, New Mexico relies so heavily on these revenues that come in. These this is almost fifty percent of our state's budget. And if we start putting these these uh, regulations in place that change the bonding capacity. All we're doing is hamstring. This is actually a cost, not a cure. And if we're really about creating jobs, protecting our small businesses and the American worker, then taking this language out will be a much better bill. But let's remember, and I'll just reiterate this again because I think it's worth noting, the Department of Interior already has the authority to raise bonding requirements. So we really don't have to go through this process or see it put into a piece of legislation when the interior already can do this. So I think we need to support this amendment. I'm trying to work by in a bipartisan fashion so that we can, one, protect our energy sector, protect our jobs, our communities, and our states that rely so heavily, and a country that depends on the energy that we produce at home. So I would just again say I, I think this is a great amendment. Striking this language in the bill makes it a stronger bill, in my opinion, the interior already has the ability to do this, and this is truly a cost, not a cure. Thank you. I yield back the balance of the time. 
Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, let me just get this just a second. Thank you, Mr. I, I, I recognize myself uh, to speak to speak on the Herald Amendment. I'd just like to say I've heard this argument that only a small fraction of oil and gas wells on public lands have been orphaned by companies, and a small number might justify raising the cost when operators regularly return billions of dollars the tax that, That's the argument. Well, I just like to clarify that that the new estimate it's from the Interior Department that the number of wells that are often on federal land is considerably higher. The previous estimates. The estimates that have been quoted today, previous estimates, the interior is saying they're considerably higher. Combine the Forest Service, BLM, the National Park Service, and the Fish and Wildlife Service estimates for more than 14,400 wells on their lands that are either orphaned or likely to be orphaned. Given the cost to plug and reclaim these wells, the cleanup experience, uh, ex the cleanup expenses on these public lands is estimated to be more than $2 billion. And finally, I'd like to say, we're talking about a bond. If you clean up your wells, your wells when you leave, you get that bond back. We're not talking about taking your money. You can get it. When you, we're talking about a bond that hasn't been increased in a number of years. And it's only used if you walk away from the uh, from the uh, uh, from your from your own responsibilities. And with that, I'll yield back. Are there is there anyone else who wants to discuss the Mr. Chair? Yes. Is it, who is that, Mr. Chair? Um, this is uh, Congressman Huffman. Yes, Congressman Huffman, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield uh, the balance of my time to Ms. Uh, Ledger Hernandez. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Representative Huffman. Uh, I, uh, you know, I would just echo the comments made by uh, Chair Lowenthal. Uh, this is not a problem that is small. Um, there are approximately 57,000 orphaned rails in the United States and millions, millions that are abandoned and ready, you know, they're, you know, they're likely to become orphaned in the very near future. Uh, and the uh, 14,400 are in our public lands and federal, uh, are in our federal public lands. And remember, this bond only applies on our federal lands. And the point about that you get the bond back if you do what you're supposed to do, you have a legal obligation to clean this land. The bond is intended to be held to make sure that you do it so that when you walk away, if you fail to do it, the taxpayers aren't forced to do it. What this amendment would do, would say, we're gonna make sure that the taxpayers pay it rather than those who have reaped the benefit from operating the oil and gas well. And in New Mexico, it is a huge problem, $8.13 billion problem. So it is not a minuscule problem. It is a huge problem for a state like mine. I already mentioned it's close to 4,000 uh, wells in Louisiana throughout the oil and gas producing uh, states. This is a very big problem. And that bond that must be put up, it is a fraction of what your obligation is. So, you know, that's why it was so wonderful to hear from Mr. Schreiber, because he had been involved in this business. So, you know, somebody might be required to put up a $7,000 bond. That's what they would be paying for the bond. If they can't put up $7,000 towards the cost of cleanup, and the cleanup is going to cost $50,000, $60,000, $80,000, do we think that they're going to actually do it? So actually, the argument that this might put small operators out of business tells us that those small operators might not have the resources to pay for the cleanup as is required by law. When they took that lease and when they decided to be an oil and gas operator on our public lands, they made us a promise that they would clean up. 
And we are just saying we want to make sure that you don't walk away from that promise. And that's what this bond is. Uh, and with that, I yield back. Chairman Lowenthal. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Representative Gosar, Representative Gosar, you're, rep you're uh, recognized for five minutes. Yes. Uh, Representative Harrell, uh, you're from New Mexico as well, right? Representative Harrell? Yes. Now, you said something that uh, the administration and the uh, uh, departments actually have the right uh, and the jurisdiction to actually raise these bonds. Is that correct? Representative Harrell? That the interior has the ability to raise the bonding rates. So, so it's, this is like kind of like double stuff. So it seems to me like we're, we're missing the point here. We're complicating and messing up the whole process when that jurisdiction is already there. We ought to be holding the Interior Department accountable for that. I mean, how many years has it been that we don't have an accurate count? For Christ's sakes, I mean, this is not a new problem. Everybody's acknowledged that. So we ought to have a better grip on that number. Number two is we ought to hold those administrative people accountable for those actions and to make sure that that, that oversight is regulated accordingly. Wouldn't you say that, uh, Representative Harrell? I would agree, yes. And so we're, we're talking around the issue in a, in, a, in a purely partisan fashion because there's a bill out there that has uh, uh, bipartisan support. And so from my standpoint, I find it, uh, once again, where this resources committee is going down a partisan rabbit hole and there's already things in place for that jurisdiction, we need to hold those people accountable for that oversight. Agreed. Agreed. Well, I, I thought I was missing something here, Representative Harrell. And with that, I yield back. Miss, will the gentleman yield? Yes, yes, I will. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gosar. Mr. Chairman, I would like to submit for the record a GAO report 19-615, uh, published on September 28, 2019, that shows on federal lands there were 96,199 wells, 296 had been left to BLM to reclaim. That's 0.3%, Mr. Chairman, on federal lands, and I would like to submit that report for the record. I yield back to the chairman. Without objection. Without objection. I yield back, Chairman. I yield back, Chairman Lowenthal. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Herald Amendment number one to the bill. I'm going to pause so the members in favor can unmute. All those in favor of the Herald Amendment, say aye. 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 Members, please mute themselves. I'm going to pause so members opposed can unmute. All those opposed to the to the Herald Amendment, please say no. 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 Members will please mute themselves again. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, we request a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested. This vote will be postponed pursuant to, my, to a previous an, uh, announcement by the chair of the full committee. Representative Rosendale, you have the next amendment designated as Rosendale number one. You are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When reviewing this bill in advance of the markup today, I was particularly struck by a subsection the sponsor was referring to as regulatory improvement grants. And the meaning of the phrase regulatory improvement in this case, I think, perfectly sums up the difference between the views of the Republicans and the Democrats on this committee. I, along with my Republican colleagues, believe that a re regulatory improvement would be getting government out of the way 
and allowing our energy sector to thrive. And that was the tack that the Trump administration took when it came to energy production, leading to an era of energy dominance and prosperity. Unfortunately, it appears Democrats on this committee believe in the failed Biden approach, which defines regulatory improvement as imposing crushing new regulations on our traditional energy industries. We're already seeing the results of these disastrous policies. According to the Consumer Price Index, energy prices have increased 25% over the last year. But unfortunately, rather than improving the regulatory situation to address this, the Regulatory Improvement Grants section of this bill actually rewards and incentivizes states to impose new regulations on oil and gas production. And as many of my colleagues have previously stated, this actually incentivizes orphan wells. This includes $20 million incentives for things like strict caps on methane emissions, bans on venting and flaring, and increased bonding requirements. My amendment would eliminate these incentives to overregulate, ensuring states can make their own decisions about their traditional energy resources without the heavy hand of the federal government tipping the scale against them. With energy prices soaring, it is time we reevaluate these damaging policies, not reward and encourage their adoption even further. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Rosendale. I now want to recognize myself. Uh, I oppose this amendment. Uh, this amendment would eliminate all the discretionary rents in the bill. I'm not sure about the purposes behind this amendment since these grants are voluntary and states are under no obligation to strengthen their oil and gas regulations. The purpose of the regulatory improvement grants is to encourage states to take fiscally and environmentally beneficial actions and reward those that do with additional federal funds to clean up orphan wells. These grants will encourage positive state actions that lead to fewer orphan wells and less pollution. In my view, this amendment does not improve the legislation, and I urge uh, uh, opposition, and I yield back. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on the amendment? Mr. Chairman, if Ms. Westerman. I recognize the ranking member, Mr. Westerman, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I like the way you painted that picture of the, you know, the states don't have to participate we're just they not don't. going to give them any of the, the federal money to help clean up these orphaned wells. Uh, and it's just a way to hold the grant money hostage over the states to make states adopt overly restrictive uh, policies when uh, the procedures and the permitting processes that these states have and the job they do uh, with environmental sustainability is uh, you know equal to or better than what the federal government is proposing. So... Uh, I support Mr. Rosendale's amendment. Again, this is something that's making this bill that should be bipartisan partisan. Uh, it's not in the, the Luan Kramer bill. And if we wanted to be serious about having a bipartisan approach to cleaning up orphan wells, which I think we all can agree on that, uh, we would adopt uh, these amendments. Again, I urge support of the amendment. And I yield back. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, Ledger Fernandez. Yes, you, uh, Representative Ledger Fernandez, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you so very much. So uh, I rise in opposition to the amendment and, and join the, uh, the, the comments uh, uh, made by Chair Lowenthal. Um, this is a discretionary grant. We are authorizing $5 billion in funds for states to clean up orphan wells, period. No strings attached, no $5 billion. So we are saying, hey, states, you have a problem? Here's $5 billion. But we also must recognize that because some states don't really have a program right now, 
uh, but might want to, we're actually allowing and providing funds to say it's to actually set up a regulatory program if they want to. So the discretionary grants are exactly that. For those states who say we actually think that it's important that we not get stuck holding the bag for all these abandoned rails that are out here, that we want to do something and we're going to take advantage of the fact that there is federal money out there to do it and we're going to access that federal money. Now, if a state has stricter uh, regulations than what uh, the federal government has, great. They are actually able to say, hey, federal government, I have stricter regulations. I would like to get additional grant money from you. And the bill allows that too. So this bill is great because if a state has stricter regulations, as Ranking Member Resterman noted, you can get money from uh, uh, through this bill. If a state uh, doesn't have the kind of regulatory framework that they would like uh, and they want some assistance to do so and they want to put that in place and start cleaning up rails, they get to do so. And third, for those states who do not want to participate in this process, they don't have to. So in terms of thinking that this is a state regulatory that we're, you know, we're not telling them what to do. We're telling them if you want this money, here's some money and you could do it. So, you know, this is consistent with the argument that states should regulate oil and gas and other environmental standards themselves. Would the gentle lady yield? Uh, if I, in a minute, I'll, I'll finish, uh, but I will yield. Yes, I'll yield. Uh, but I just want to say stricter doesn't always mean better. And if states have common sense rules that are working and all of a sudden the federal government says, here's some, here's some money, uh, here's some Scooby snacks for you, but you've got to do the trick. You've got to follow the overburdensome federal regulations that may not work for our state or for your state. But if you want the money, you've got to do it. Even though what you have is common sense and it's working, uh, you can't have the money unless you uh, play by the, the overburdensome rules that we said. I, I thank the general woman for yielding and I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member. Uh, you, use the, you use the term that if they had stricter regulations, so I was building upon your reference to the fact that you believe that some states have stricter regulations. But this bill doesn't tell you you must adopt federal regulations. What it simply says is, are you doing something to address this problem? In very, you know, and, and if you read the bill, uh, it, it speaks in very broad terms so that a state can show that, yes, you know, I've met these very broad terms. This is what we are doing in this manner. And we are submitting it to um, the Secretary of Interior. And we'd like the and, and based on that, we would like the Secretary of Interior to release grants to us. So it is very much common sense. So I hope that when you read those sections, you realize that's very common sense. It's very broad. Uh, and it simply is a way of incentivizing states that if in the future they want to um, set up a program, increase their environmental regulations, this is something that allows them to do that. Uh, and once again, if a state doesn't want to participate, they don't have to. So with that, I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Rosendale Amendment number one to the bill. I will pause so that members in favor can unmute. All those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Members will please mute themselves again. I will pause so that, so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please say no. 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 Members will please meet again. Any of the chair that knows how it is not agreed upon. Mr. Chair. Yes. I'd like to request a recorded vote on that. A recorded vote has been requested. This vote will be postponed pursuant to chair Paul's previous announcement.
Chair, Chair Starber, uh, Representative Starber, you have the next amendment designated as Starber number one. Recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Chair Lowenthal. Uh, my amendment expands the bill's program on job loss to include those hurt by President Biden's job killing executive orders. It has been 126 days since Joe Biden issued job killing executive orders on Inauguration Day. Included in that executive order were bans on oil and gas leasing and rescinding the Keystone XL pipeline. The Teamsters, operating engineers, pipe fitters and laborers all signed project labor agreements and all were lost when Biden sided with his radical environmentalists. In the same breath, he promised jobs to replace those that were lost. Today, I ask once again, where are those jobs? Unfortunately, those jobs went to Russia. Joe Biden banned the Keystone Pipeline but lifted sanctions on Vladimir Putin's Nord Stream 2. Joe Biden killed thousands of jobs, thousands of union jobs, but stands side by side with Vladimir Putin's Nord Stream 2. Patrick Thorson, an operating engineer from northern Minnesota, testified from personal experience on Keystone, and I quote, what do you say to a man whose livelihood was taken away from him by an elected official whose answer was to, quote, go get a different job, end quote? It's a good question. What do you say to a pipeline worker who lost his job to Russian workers because of this president's executive orders? I urge adoption of my amendment, and I yield back. Thank you, Representative Stauber. I'm going to recognize myself. Uh, I oppose this amendment. The formula that's used to distribute grants to states within, the, within the, this, this bill already, and I repeat that, already accounts for oil and gas job losses. In fact, it considers the jobs lost between March of 2020 and the date of enactment. In this way, the grants are in part based upon unemployment that resulted because of both the pandemic and last year's turmoil in the oil and gas industry. I do not believe that my colleague's amendment improves upon the formula and I urge opposition and I yield back. Is there anyone else who, who wishes to speak on the amendment? Mr. Chairman, the Ledger Fernandez wishing to speak. I seem to have, oh, thank you. I seem to have lost your voice. So uh, I, uh, I echo uh, Chairman Lowenthal's uh, uh, opposition to the amendment. I would also note that the explanation of the amendment really is not dealing with what this bill is about. This bill isn't about the Keystone XL pipeline or President Biden's executive order. And as noted, the formula in the bill already accounts for oil and gas industry job losses. Um, so the amendment doesn't serve a practical purpose with regards to what we're trying to get at with this bill. Um, I urge opposition to the amendment and I yield back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the State Department has forecasted no more than 50 jobs, some of which would be located in Canada would be required to maintain the Keystone Pipeline. 35 of them would be permanent, while 15 would be temporary contractors. Uh, it's really important to continue to correct the record uh, and talk about the 18 million jobs that the American Jobs Plan would create. So I assume as all of you are worried about jobs, you're planning to support this major infrastructure upgrade that will not only build back better and upgrade our infrastructure, but create 18 million jobs and I yield back. Thank you. 
Is there any other further discussion on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on Staba Amendment Number One to the bill. I will pause so members in favor can unmute. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Members will please mute themselves again. I will pause so the members that are opposed can unmute. All those opposed say no. 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 Members will please mute themselves again. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair? Yes, you recognize. Stopper here may I request a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested. This vote will be postponed pursuant to Chair Grijalva's earlier announcement. Representative Stauber, you have the next amendment designated Stauber number two, and you're recognized for five minutes. Mr. Stauber, you're muted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the underlying bill today uh, levies uh, onerous methane regulations copied and pasted from Ob- Obama Biden's attempt at regulating. Despite the narrative pushed by the Green New Deal Democrats, the United States has led the world in emissions reductions. Meanwhile, communist China has been increasing emissions year over year, along with increasing oil and gas development and significantly growing their refining capacity. Therefore, my amendment disallows the emissions regulations from taking effect until the Secretary of the Interior, in consultation with the Secretary of Energy and the Nonpartisan Energy Information Administration, conducts a study comparing our emission trends with China. If the Paris Climate Accord supporters present here today believe that John Kerry's taxpayer-funded trips to Beijing will truly move China on climate, they should support this amendment. Let's not punish Americans who take care of the environment and lead the world in emissions reductions, all while while providing affordable energy. Instead, the real polluters are. Thank you, Representative and Ranking Member Stauber. Uh, is there any further discussion on the amendment? Uh, hearing no further Mr. debate, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Representative Ledger, Ledger for not. Mr. Chair, recognize. thank you. I oppose this amendment. I don't know why we would cede to China the right for us to take strong action to protect our own health and our planet. You can't wait for China. My constituents' health and our climate is negatively impacted by methane. Uh, New Mexico's four corner area uh, where we have oil and gas production has higher levels of asthma and respiratory disease and methane is a contributing factor to surface level ozone. So this amendment would needlessly delay money going to states like New Mexico who have made or will make regulatory improvements. And we need to be honest, oil and gas operations are a major source of methane pollution, which warms the climate, degrades air quality, and seriously impairs public health. According to EPA data, since 1990, methane emissions from oil and gas production activities have increased by nearly 35%. And the United States uh, is one of the largest uh, sources of gas bearing in the world after Russia, Iraq, and Iran. Uh, So in addition to, yes, aggressive federal regulation of methane emissions of the oil and gas sector, which I support, states need to reduce methane emissions too. In New Mexico, when we have methane emissions, uh, it means we also do not collect any royalty or severance tax on those rest. It is simply wasted. We must stop being wasteful. So we, uh, I would also point out that, uh, The U.S. uh, lacks methane standards in the U.S. can hurt the natural gas industry's export market as the world takes its greenhouse gas commitments to a bigger level. Uh, So uh, last year, French energy company Engie backed out of a multi-billion dollar deal to 
import U.S. because of concerns around our methane emissions here. So all of my provision in the bill uh, rewards states that reduce methane pollution with more federal funds to plug and reclaim more orphaned wells. Once again, it is uh, a, a discretionary option for the state. Uh, I will say that my home state of New Mexico, which does rely heavily on oil and gas development, recognize the need to uh, control methane and develop some of the strongest methane requirements in the country. And if a major oil and gas producer like New Mexico can clamp down on methane pollution, then any state can. Uh, so I urge opposition to the amendment and I yield back. Thank you, Representative Ledger Fernandez. Uh, before, is there hearing, is there any further discussion on the amendments? Mr. Chairman, uh, Graves, yes. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Graves, you're, rec you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Be very quick. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to make note that we, 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 we've got to have accuracy in this in this discussion here. Um, the, the, the backing out of, a, of an agreement um, from U.S. supplied gas had absolutely nothing to do with methane emissions, zero. And, and I'm trying to get my hands on a letter that we sent uh, in regard to this. Here, here's the fact, Mr. Chairman. The fact is, and you know this, the fact is, is that the National Energy Technology Labs, a total independent nonpartisan analysis, found that U.S. natural gas had somewhere between a 41 and 47 percent lower emissions profile transported transported to Europe, transported to China, um, then, then competing gas from Russia. We have some of the lowest emissions profile associated with our gas end-to-end -end because of our regulatory structure uh, than any other produced uh, natural gas in the, in the, on the globe. And, and so I think it is important that we, we talk facts here. I also am really curious, Mr. Chairman, about um, this committee's jurisdiction on methane emissions. Um, I, I, it was my understanding that, that the Energy and Commerce Committee had jurisdiction over that, but um, um, I, I'll go ahead and yield back. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Graves. Uh, is, are there any further discussions on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, I'd like to ask the ranking member, Mr. Westerman, in the interest of time, if you're planning on calling for a recorded vote on all the remaining amendments, I would be willing to dispense with the voice vote and just go right away to a recorded vote on all the rest of the amendments. If you're asking for a recorded vote on all the amendments, if would you be agreeable to that, Mr. Westerman? Um, Mr. Chairman, we're pretty much going to ask for recorded votes on the remaining amendments. There might be one that we wouldn't ask for a recorded vote on, but it, um, it, it might, in the interest of Tom, be better just to go ahead and do recorded votes. Let's just go and let's just do recorded votes on all of them. Thank you, Mr. Westerman. That'd be just fine with us. All right. So hearing no debate and a recorded vote has been requested. This vote on Stauber number two will be postponed pursuant to Chairman uh, Grijalva's prior announcement. Representative Stauber, you now have the next amendment designated as Stauber number three, and you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The bill before us today is clearly intended to dovetail with the Green New Deal goal of ending domestic oil production completely in the name of emissions reduction. My amendment number three requires a life cycle analysis on the emissions from sourcing, transporting, and constructing wind turbines and solar panels. Believe, believe it or not, green energy releases greenhouse gas emissions as well. Therefore, to evalu evaluate whether any energy transition really leads to a reduction in emissions, we need to look at the entire life cycle cost of doing so. Just the mm -hmm. other day, the Democrat witness from EDF Renewables was unable to answer whether they imported their solar panels from slave labor in China. That's right. They could not answer that question. A life cycle analysis will help us understand where these components are sourced 
and how much human and environmental costs are involved. I urge the adoption of my amendment and I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Stauber. Is there any further discussion on this amendment on Stauber number three? Mr. Chair? Yes, Representative Ledger Fernandez, you're, re you're recognized for five minutes. So uh, I, um, I oppose this amendment. Uh, I'm not sure what the connection is between the amendment and the bill. Uh, uh, this bill is not dealing with renewable energy. Uh, and if the sponsor wants to study life cycle emissions of wind and solar panels, uh, I um, you know, would love to see what a bill like his to do that would be. I think it uh, would you know, I would be open to reviewing such a bill. Uh, and I would also point out that the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, one of our esteemed national laboratories, already have conducted uh, analysis uh, like this, which we can uh, refer uh, my colleague to. Uh, so um, we, uh, the, and uh, so, you know, there is that, and, and, and I can provide that to Mr. Stauber uh, to assist in, in, in answering that question. And lastly, in regard to the last amendment, I would like to, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record an article from the Wall Street Journal about NG backing out of a deal with the United States regarding um, that matter that I spoke to. Thank you. I urge opposition. I yield back. That will be accepted without objection. Is there any further discussion on Stauber Amendment Number Three? Hearing no further debate, uh, a recorded vote has been requested, and this vote will be postponed pursuant to Chairman Grahalva's previous announcement. Representative Graves, uh, Mr. Chairman, before I jump into amendment designated as Graves Number One, and you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just before I get into that, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that a November 2nd, 2020 letter uh, to um, uh, President of France, uh, Mr. Macron, be included in the record uh, that, that disputes um, the, the uh, suggestion that U.S. emissions associated with gas is, uh, is the reason for a uh, deal to be canceled. This letter signed by myself, Mr. Westerman, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Scalise, and many other members um, that that uh, are, are well educated on this issue. Um, Without objection, that will be accepted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you were breaking up a little bit earlier. You may want to come in a little closer to your house. I think you might be out there on the beach a little too far. Um, so, uh, okay, so we're doing number one. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, what this amendment does is it um, it, it basically says that um, before any provisions to to, to um, increase bonding uh, that, that's called for in the underlying bill, uh, that that it first must be effectively certified that this isn't going to result in increased job losses in the United States. Mr. Chairman, um, you've heard members speak throughout this markup about strong concerns that what's been happening is that the energy policies and uh, the, these regulations and executive orders are simply resulting in higher energy prices. And while I heard it mentioned earlier that prices perhaps have come down from their peak, uh, we still have gas prices in my home state of a dollar a gallon uh, more than they were uh, just just last year. Um, and so uh, right now, a dollar a gallon. And by the way, for my friends in California, our our, uh, our high prices here right now, I believe, are uh, last I saw somewhere around around uh, 270 a gallon. So uh, 280 a gallon, somewhere around there, just to, just to put in perspective. So if you all want to come buy your gas here and drive back home, you may save money. Um, in any case, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we've seen policies coming out of this administration that are confounding. Policies where the Keystone pipeline is being shut down. Uh, and, and, and again, President Biden is being proclaimed a hero from that. Yet, when the Colonial Pipeline is shut down, uh, the folks who did it are terrorists and they're hackers. And we're going after them for criminal uh, penalties, criminal punishment in that case, 
Um, we've seen, again, Keystone Pipeline shut down by this administration, losing the jobs associated with that. And meanwhile, this administration facilitating the construction of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline by rescinding sanctions on uh, Russian uh, intelligence uh, affiliated individuals that are very close with the Putin administration. Again, President Biden rescinding those sanctions on those folks that are building the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that then facilitates the transportation of Russian gas into Germany, into the European Union, where U.S. gas is cleaner and should be displacing uh, or supplanting that Russian gas. Um, all of this results in the loss of U.S. jobs, just like this underlying bill does. So what our amendment, once again, it says before any of these increases um, in bonding be required that there first be a certification that this will not result, that this bonding issue will not result in the increased uh, loss of American jobs. We've already seen how this administration is forcing our own U.S. government to compete, to compete with employers around the United States. I know that it's I've traveled around our district. We've got employers, job creators all over the place that have been unable to fill positions and have even had to shut their businesses down because they can't even get folks to come in and work, including uh, jobs like wait staff. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I urge adoption of this amendment and yield back. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Representative Ledger Fernandez, you are recognized for five minutes. Uh, so, uh, I respectfully oppose this amendment. Uh, uh, with regards to uh, the bonding, we're not asking industry to do anything that is unfair or illogical. Once again, we're asking the industry to live up to its obligation uh, and to assure taxpayers and the American public that they have put aside the resources necessary to do so. Uh, and once again, uh, the Interstate Oil and Gas Compact Commission has noted that there are at least 3,966, I've been saying almost 4,000, but uh, orphaned wells in Louisiana. Uh, I'd also like to put into the record an article from the local Fox outlet based in New Orleans discussing, among larger issues with orphaned wells in the state, that the state government had to pay over $550,000 to plug a single well in 2015. Um, and so in talking about what might be the cost of plugging wells on our public lands, uh, the comparison of $10,000 shows that those kinds of costs are not uh, unreasonable. And with regards to jobs, once again, um, uh, those abandoned uh, and orphaned wells are sitting there. Uh, they're not creating any oil and gas for uh, us to use in the United States uh, and plugging them uh, would actually create uh, up to 120,000 jobs. The bill would also uh, require that prevailing wage provisions are paid so that those jobs are fair and livable wages. And um, once again, because of the practical amendment, what this bill is doing is actually setting up a pretty quick process of getting the money out to the state so that we can begin this cleanup as soon as possible. We can put those um, uh, skilled workers to uh, work as quick as possible, and we would not want to uh, take action such as is suggested by this amendment to delay that process. So I urge opposition, and I yield back. Thank you. Does the gentleman yield? Will you, the question is, will you yield uh, representative to representative yeah. Graves? Yeah. Uh, yes, I had already, I will yield. I, I'm sorry, Thanks. My. I will note that my internet, it, we have a problem all over, right? Seems to be breaking in and out. So, uh, 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 yes, I do yield. Thank you. Um, uh, I just want to make note that the, the comments you made while, uh, you, you you did make those before, and I and I appreciate uh, some of the points that you made. Uh, number one, uh, Mr. Westman noted earlier that one of the tools that this underlying legislation takes away is actually the national bonding that would provide substantial or more than adequate funding to address individual or, or abandoned um, or orphaned wells. Number two, uh, and let's be very clear about the four quarters of this amendment. This amendment doesn't have anything to do with the majority of, of issues that were just discussed. This has to do simply with jobs. So if you all are correct, 
than, than requiring a certification by the Secretary of Interior that says that no jobs be lost. All, all this does is effectively allow you to put your money where your mouth is. It allows you all to verify that this will not result in job losses in the United States. I've heard many of you talk about union jobs and, and job creation. Look, we're on the same page. We want to create jobs. We want to get people back to work. We want to have the federal government stop competing with our job creators. And so this simply says that that the Secretary of the Interior has to certify that there won't be job losses. That's it. That's all the amendment does. Yield back. So uh, thank you for yielding back. And I look forward to uh, my colleagues' support of the American Jobs Plan and all of the different investments in our infrastructure, which will create those great jobs for America. And when we start investing in what we need uh, to make sure that America is prepared to make sure our communities thrive. So thank you very much. And uh, Chair, I yield back. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Hearing no further debate, I would like to thank Representative Graves for his offer for me to come to Louisiana, which I very much enjoyed coming to Louisiana before to visit him, uh, to fill up my car with gasoline that's cheaper in Louisiana than in California. I have owned an all-electric car for two years, and I don't pay any money for gasoline. Thank you. A recorded vote has been requested, and this vote will be postponed pursuant to my prior uh, to, to Representative uh, or Chairman Grijalva's prior announcement. Representative Graves, you have the next amendment designated as number two, and you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this amendment, uh, again, another very simple amendment, and it just says that um, that that the that the, the legislation cannot result in a decrease in energy production domestically. Um, uh, my friend, the, the, the chairman, Mr. Lowenthal, just noted that, um, that that he has electric vehicles. As he knows, I, I do as well. And he also knows that uh, the natural gas that we produce here in Louisiana, um, some of the oil provided uh, by Saudi Arabia to your home state, also help to support that energy industry in California and um, and 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 that helps to create the energy that's needed to uh, charge those those electric vehicles, and and so certainly uh, we would not want to uh, cause legislation to force a decrease in domestic energy production that would then cause us to be more reliant upon foreign sources of energy, resulting in higher global emissions. Uh, that I know Mr. Uh, Soto and other members of this committee have have made mention of. So uh, again, just just want to make sure that we identify those areas of bipartisan concern, like ensuring that the United States not become more dependent upon foreign sources of energy, that we maintain this energy independence that we were able to achieve uh, just in November of last year, for example, for the first time in decades and decades. And so let me just say it again, Mr. Chairman, very simple amendment. It just says that um, the secretary has to certify that um, under this legislation, we would not see a decrease in domestic energy production, which would then um, cause an increase in prices of gas at the pump and increased dependence upon foreign energy sources. So yield back. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to recognize myself. I strongly oppose this amendment. This amendment would prevent the entire bill from taking effect until the secretary certifies that it won't result in less oil and gas production or increase gas prices. These types of requirements are entirely unworkable in practice. Considering the complexity of oil and gas markets and the number of factors that influence the price at the pump, all this amendment would do is prevent states that desperately need assistance cleaning up orphan wells from receiving federal funds. I don't believe this amendment improves the bill, and I urge opposition. And I yield back. Mr. Chairman, I think you're muted, Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. Yes, you are recognized, Mr. Westerman, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would invite you to, to Arkansas, where you can fill up with both electrons or hydrocarbons. Take your pick for a lot lower price than you can get them in uh, in California. And now, I man, it's probably not going to be as low a price as what you can get for your electrons in the Cannon Garage, where there's uh, free charging stations out there. I've never seen any any uh, free gasoline pumps out in the Cannon Garage, but I don't know where all that free electricity comes from, uh, but somebody's paying the price for it. And I support Mr. Graves' amendment uh, because if you look at what this um, this bill would do in its current form, uh, I believe it's going to put unnecessary burdens on American citizens. We're moving into Memorial Day weekend, and gasoline prices are forecasted to be higher than they've been since 2014. And this bill in its current form would do nothing but increase energy prices on hardworking American taxpayers going forward. Uh, with all the increasing prices we've seen in other commodity products, I think uh, this bill would just add to the inflation that we're already seeing. Now, again, there's a problem out there that we all agree is a problem with orphaned wells. We all want to see that problem fixed, and, uh, and states have issues with this. So the federal government has a huge amount of leverage here. And I'll go back to the Scooby Snack uh, illustration again. It's like, here's, your, here's some money to clean up your orphaned wells. Now, sit, lie down, roll over, prevent all the flaring from your, your gas wells, even though you do it better than anybody else in the world, you're the leaders in technology and producing clean gas. If you want your, your money to clean up orphaned wells, which we all agree uh, we need, then you're going to have to uh, follow this, this uh, mandate that's going to raise prices for energy uh, for everyday Americans. So uh, I think Mr. Graves makes a valid point with this amendment. I strongly support it. And uh, I believe that the secretary should do an analysis to see if this is going to increase uh, result in decreased domestic production and increased prices on the American consumer. Again, I support the amendment. I yield back. Thank you. Is there further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Chair? Yes. Mr. Stauber? Mr. Stauber, Mr. Stauber Mr. you're Chair. recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Won't take that long. I, I rise in support of my colleague's amendment. It's a simple, just a simple statement. Uh, wants to certify that there will be no decrease in domestic energy production. Um, it's as simple as that. We know that being uh, energy uh, dominant, energy uh, efficient, when we can do that, it helps uh, the lower middle class. Those are the people that many of us represent here on this uh, on this call. So I think it's a real, real simple. Uh, amendment, and uh, uh, again, I support it, and I yield back. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on Graves Amendment Number Two, uh, Mr. Chairman? Um, have a unanimous consent request. Please go forward. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, asking unanimous consent to submit uh, the record a, a letter uh, from Senators Schumer. Menendez, Cantwell, and a fourth one I can't remember right now, um, that, um, that, that actually request an increase in oil and gas production because of concerns associated with uh, higher gasoline prices at the pump and the adverse impact on, uh, on Americans. Uh, that's been submitted to the repository. Without objection, that will be ex submitted into the record. Has been requested. Yes. Hello. Who is that? I was just pointing out that you were muted. I was not able to hear you. All right. I just said that a recorded vote uh, has been requested. I also accepted into the record, but unanimous consent, uh, the letter that uh, Mr. Graves has uh, wanted to enter into the record. So that's what I've done. Would you like to speak on the bill? Okay, with that, a recorded vote has been requested. This vote will be uh, postponed pursuant 
to Chairman Grijalva's prior announcement. Representative Graves, you have the next amendment designated as amendment number 85. You are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no plans to take that entire amount of time. Um, what this does, uh, it was discussed earlier that the underlying legislation creates a grant program for states uh, associated with, with regulatory uh, requirements. And so it provides uh, funding to those states um, to, to effectively create or expand upon a regulatory structure. Uh, what, what this amendment does, it very simply just says that the, the funds cannot be predicated on a requirement that the regulatory structure that that state puts together goes beyond the federal requirements. And so it, 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 it still allows for the grant program to exist. It still allows for states to uh, get grants, but it, it cannot be predicated on um, the, the, the requirement that states put more strict, uh, 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 more stringent regulations in place than those required under federal law. Uh, so I urge adoption amendment and yield back. Thank you, Representative Graves. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Uh, uh, Chairman Lowenthal? Yes, you, Representative Ledger Fernandez, you are recommend, you are recognized, you're recommended, but, but you're recognized for five minutes. Well, I hope the committee takes the recommendation that I make to oppose this amendment. Uh, and I'm very, I, I, I want to begin, uh, Representative Grace, by thanking you for not submitting from from three to 84 <laughs> in the amendments. Uh, so, um, uh, but I'd also seek uh, opposition because um, it is not necessary. If we actually read the bill, it says that the uh all it's asking is that the state has made improvements. It is not tying it in any way uh, to federal uh, regulations. It is simply saying throughout the bill is like you are allowed to seek these grant funds if you have made improvements to your state programs. I'll quote, the state has made improvements to state programs designed to prevent future orphan rail burdens, dot, 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 such as. So there's a, you know, there's lots of leeway. And then throughout, before that, it's like made improvements uh, on section BB uh, also states uh, that you've strengthened your program. So once again, this is, uh, um, I oppose this amendment because it is not necessary. Uh, the bill already provides states uh, significant uh, uh, leeway in, in, in making their claim to the uh, interior regarding why they should be allowed to receive this discretion. Well, will the general yield you. for a question? I will, you, uh, yes. Representative Legend Fernandez, do you wish to yield to Representative Graves for question? For, for a question. Uh, I had already yielded back, but I will. Un am I allowed to unyield and <laughs> answer this question? You can unyield. You can unyield all you want. I right. shall unyield my yielding time and uh, receive a question from Representative okay. Graves. Okay, thank you. And just, so I just want to. I want to make sure I hear what you're saying. Are you saying that the underlying text does not? in any way favor, give bonus points, or in any way, um, uh, so I guess, reward states that develop programs that, um, that have more stringent requirements than allowed uh, under, under, than are required under federal law? So uh, I think that for, if you read it, so the, the the bill is intended to give discretionary grants. Once again, if a state wants it, they can go do that. That encourages states to take fiscally environmentally positive actions uh, and including asking the federal government for money so they can implement those. Um, so states with less restrictive uh, natural gas regulations uh, can say, we want to do better. But we are the. If you look at the text, that's comparing it. Are you strengthening? Are you are you improving your ability to avoid orphan wells in the future? Are you improving your ability to contain envir uh, environmental damage? So that is the marker uh, uh, that I think that if you read the bill, you would see that. So um, uh, I I also don't think we want to. If a state wants to enact like New Mexico just did. 
even though we depend for that $3 billion you talked about, if New Mexico wants to take stronger action to reduce methane emissions, they can. That is each state's going to look at their program and decide what they want to do and then make that point um, to uh, the federal government. But you don't have to start at New Mexico. New Mexico would benefit because they'd say, hey, listen, two years ago we didn't have this. Now we have now we have something stronger. There might be a state that hasn't really started that process but wants to because, remember, these orphan rounds and, uh, and this process, this is something that affects the residents of that state. And so that's why my state uh, undertook those actions because they want to be able to not just protect the environment so that we don't have those storms you mentioned, but also to protect the health of the residents. And I believe uh, my time is up. And so I yield back Chairman Lowenthal. Thank, thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion on Graves Amendment number 85? Not hearing any, a recorded vote has been requested. Mr. Oh, Chairman? Yes. yes um, I'm not, on this one, I'm not requesting a recorded vote. If somebody else wants to, that's fine. No, that's great then. Uh, if there's no, if you're not requesting a recorded vote, we'll move on to the next bill, the next amendment. So we will not have a recorded vote on Graves 85. Okay. Let's move on to Graves' next amendment designated as Graves number 88. You are recognized for five minutes, Representative Graves. Um, Mr. Chairman, I really hope this amendment can be bipartisan. Uh, this one simply says, if you're going to do a grant program, allow there to allow the, the eligible use of funds to include a PPP, meaning a public-private partnership between government and innovators. And, and so that's all this does. It, it simply says that, that if you're going to do this grant program, don't limit the use of funds to a state regulator. Allow the state, and again, it doesn't require it. It simply makes it an eligible option. I, I, I certainly don't pretend to advise anybody here on policy, um, but, but I, I do think that this one should be something that we can agree on. Um, it simply expands the eligibility to public-private partnerships so states and, and, and innovators can, can work together to implement uh, a program that will help in, in, in addressing the reduction of methane or the objectives of the, of the sponsor in this case. So uh, urge adoption and yield back. Thank you, Representative Graves. Uh, <clears throat> is there any further discussion on the amendment. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, so um, at this point, I'm going to oppose this amendment um, uh, because this is imposing a new discretionary grant criteria that once again, I'm not sure is, re is necessary given the broad language that allows states to uh, uh, show the Secretary of the Interior the many ways in which they have improved, which could include uh, PPPs for innovation. Uh, and I think that, in fact, the idea of innovation is also throughout this grant. You will note that on uh, in uh, that on page 26, uh, section D allows for technical assistance to be provided so that we can look at what are some of the most innovative ways of working on this. Um, so, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would, uh, Mr. Graves, welcome a discussion with you uh, about this. Uh, this is the first uh, I've uh, seen of it, and so I would welcome a further discussion with you. Uh, I look forward to uh, having that discussion between now and perhaps when the bill um, may make it to the floor. Uh, but at this point in time, I uh, would oppose the uh, amendment because I don't think it is absolutely necessary. Is there any further discussion on amendment designated number 88? Hearing no, a recorded vote has been requested, and this vote will be postponed pursuant to- Mr. Chairman? Chairman, yes. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking for a recorded vote on this one. I do want to express my extreme disappointment in that this, I mean, in the last two amendments, Mr. Chairman, 
uh, it, it, the, the, the sponsor basically has said that, oh, no, this in both cases, it's not prevented. Well, then why aren't we adopting these just for clarification? Why aren't we building a legislative history or legislative record on this? So I'm very disappointed. But I will say I'm not going to request a recorded vote here. Um, but but we need to give more specificity and not just sit here and pontificate whether something actually does something or does. Mr. Chairman. Yes, who it, yes Representative, Representative Gosar. I would actually ask for a recorded vote. All right, a recorded vote has been requested. This vote will be postponed pursuant to Chairman Grijalva's previous. Are there any other amendments to this bill? Mr. Chairman, I have number 89. All right. Um, if you have uh, number eighty-nine, uh, you are rec recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I, I keep hearing all this talk about the need to address uh, abandoned mines. Um, excuse me, abandoned uh, orphan wells and abandoned wells. Um, so let's let's. Um, Let's put things in perspective in regard to, uh, you know, I've heard a number of folks talk about job creation in the United States. Um, we have seen this year alone where we have had record inflation, much greater inflation than we have seen in many, many years. We have seen gas prices escalate, lumber prices escalate, all sorts of things, which is is devaluing the paycheck that hardworking American workers are out there uh, trying to earn. It's devaluing uh, in many cases, the superfluous checks that the government is cutting to people through stimulus and unemployment uh, that, that I'll say it again, in some cases, people shouldn't be getting. As a matter of fact, under the American Rescue Plan, uh, the bailout bill uh, that, that did very little for actual COVID, um, that bill included 1,160 percent. Uh, of the amount of money that states have actually lost. And that was before the state of California reported their $75 billion increase or, or surplus in revenue. So um, following the CARES Act, which was when a, a, a uh, much lower level of funding was provided to states, um, I believe it was North Dakota used part of their money to actually do abandoned and plugged well work. And so considering that, for example, my home state of Louisiana, we got 614% of our actual revenue losses. Say that again, 614% of our actual revenue losses. Um, let's see, um, Arizona, our, our distinguished chairman's um, uh, state, they actually have a surplus, according to the Tax Foundation, of nearly $360 million in revenue. But don't worry, because federal taxpayers, which let's be clear on who this is, our children and grandchildren are going to end up paying billions and billions of dollars for this, this payment to, to the state of California of seven point three. Uh, excuse me, to Arizona, $7.3 billion when they've actually had a surplus of $360 million. They're getting a check for $7.3 billion. And of course, the state of California with um, the, the, the huge losses they've had, right? A $75 billion surplus. But don't worry, because our children and grandchildren are going to pay tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars to cut them a check for forty point six billion dollars. Um, I could go on and on. Uh, it is absurd the amount of money that we're spending. It is causing inflation, not as as others had projected years away. It's causing inflation right now. So how do we fix that? Of course, we've heard this administration come out and say we fix this by spending up to four trillion dollars on infrastructure, on things that aren't really infrastructure. We fix this by spending two trillion dollars on creating jobs. Um, whenever uh, it's been proven that what's happening right now is the federal government is actually competing with the private sector and compete on creating jobs. Um, it, we didn't become the most exceptional nation, uh, the greatest, strongest nation in the world by government out there creating jobs. Uh, we did this by hard work and innovation of our individual citizens. And that's what uh, this, this year has actually been disincentivizing. And so um, what this amendment does is it simply says that these excessive dollars that have gone to many of the states, which I'll say, including my home state, um, 614 percent of their losses are being given to them through the ARP funds. This says that 
if, if y'all are concerned about abandoned and orphan wells, it says explicitly that these funds may be used, the, the stimulus funds may be used by state and local governments to um, to address abandoned and orphan wells. Uh, it's a good use of taxpayer funds. It gives discretion, which I heard uh, the general lady, the sponsor of this bill from New Mexico, uh, saying is something that was needed. It gives discretion. It's not mandatory. Can't wait to hear why you'll object to this one, but I yield back to be entertained. Thank you, Representative Graves. I, I just have to recognize myself, and I appreciate your goal, Representative, of increasing the support available for remediation and the cleanup of orphan wells. The problem is, is that this amendment was only filed a few minutes ago, significantly after the, commu the committee's deadline. As such, members of this committee, our staff, the affected agencies in the executive branch, the affected stakeholders have not had a sufficient opportunity to review and comment on the amendment. Moreover, I think the amendment is not within our committee's jurisdiction under House Rule 10 and is therefore not in order. Representative Grave, I understand that you're willing to withdraw your amendment because of this issue. Is that true? Um, no, I just I just heard your rule yeah, ten uh, comment. Just from going now. back in and leaving. Oop, I'm sorry. Yes. I, I'm sorry. It's, I thought I heard somebody else speaking. Are you talking to me? Not no. I, I that was somebody who was not unmuted. Uh, oh, okay. okay. I'm, I apologize for your being interrupted. No, no worries. Uh, I, I thought somebody else was speaking. Um, uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, look, uh, I think that that this is an amendment that that, that simply makes sense. If y'all care about abandoned and orphan wells, and you will care about uh, doing the the PNA that's required on these things, then why not uh, accept this amendment and let's work together? If there are issues, then we can we can do technical corrections on the way to the floor. I, 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 is there no commitment here whatsoever to to, to work on this issue? I think there is a commitment to work on this. But no one's really had a chance to read this amendment, hear this amendment, or do this amendment at this point. Mr. It was Chairman, I, minutes ago. Mr. Chairman, I understand that that, that, that that's a go-to uh, excuse many times, but it's a really simple amendment. It says that the stimulus funds can be used to do P&A work by the states. That's all it does. And, and, and here's the issue, Mr. Chairman. Our home state, they're interested in doing this, but they're concerned that the guidance released out of Treasury doesn't give them uh, a, a appropriate uh, sort of clearance. They said it may be, it may not be. They're worried that they're going to do it, and then somebody's going to come back and try and claw back the funds. And so it's a pretty simple amendment. Uh, I, I just urge we adopt it. And instead, uh, what y'all do is, is we can work together on technical corrections if they're concerned about Rule 10. Yeah. I, I, the other issue is I haven't really had time to study. Our ledge staff and our, on our council is saying that um, it's not germane to uh, uh, under House Rule number 10. It's not in order. Uh, not that there aren't in, in, things that we could work on, but right now to vote on this, 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 like this amendment is not germane, uh, and so I'm going to insist on. A point Mr. Chairman, I will, I will, um, despite the fact that I, uh, as as based on history, there's a, a very little chance that we're going to hear anything from anyone on the committee about working with us on this down the road. I will withdraw my amendment, but I, but I want to make note that this was a really simple amendment that um, uh, very, very simple to understand, simply opens up eligibility. And I'm incredibly disappointed to hear members on the other side talk about their this desire to fix it. Yet when we offer solutions, reject those are rejected. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Grace, for doing that. I also have one last thing before I hand the gavel back to Chair Grijalva. On Graves Amendment number 85, in which uh, you said you did not want to vote. I've been informed that either we withdraw that amendment or we at least have a voice vote. I don't have the option of, of, of not doing it. And so it's up to you. Do you want to withdraw it? The emotion, or, or do you want to have a voice vote on the on the um, Mr. Chairman, because uh, I'm so gracious to all the members of this committee, I will withdraw it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think you are gracious to the members of the committee. All right. With that, are there not here any uh, other amendments? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have another amendment in the nature of a substitute. Fine. Can we do that now? 
uh, I think we're going to do the amendment in the nature of a substitute by, by that's the last one by uh, Chairman Grijalva. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to hand the gavel back with the first thing to be your amendment in the nature of a substitute. All right? Fine. Uh, Chairman Grijalva, uh, is that correct that you will do the nature of a substitute? Thank you, Mr. Lowenthal. Thank you very much for uh, for managing uh, this portion of the legislation. All of us appreciate it very much. Uh, Ms. Ledger Fernandez, you're recognized. Uh, returning to the question is on the unfinished business, the uh, uh, and the amendment uh, in in the nature of a substitute. Ms. Ledger Fernandez. Thank you very much, Chair Grijalva, and thank you, Chair Lowenthal, for handling the amendment process. As I mentioned earlier, I did take the opportunity, uh, both in preparing this legislation, doing the legislative hearing we held on this, and uh, from that time to now, to listen to stakeholders, uh, to listen to witnesses, uh, to take the advice of the Interstate Oil and Gas Compact Commission with regards to this bill. So why, this is why this amendment in the nature of a substitute includes changes to strengthen the discretionary grant methane criteria. Um, one, two, to increase flexibility for the discretionary grant criteria that addresses rail plug-in requirements based on comments raised by uh, the IOGCC Commission Director Lori Rodenberry. Uh, it provides additional clarification and flexibility to tribes when applying for and using authorized grant funding that was based on comments we received from the Osage Nation. Uh, and again, um, I want to say that plugging and reclaiming orphaned oil and grass wells is a win-win. Uh, I noted earlier that plugging 500,000 wells in this country would create 120,000 jobs. And this is an important step toward ensuring a just transition by creating jobs while reducing emissions and cleaning up our environment. I urge my colleagues to support the amendment in the nature of a substitute. And yield back. We've uh, called the ANS up and uh, have already debated the amendments. Uh, if there's no opposition, I think we go... Uh, to the roll call, uh, recorded vote request on the amendments uh, to uh, HR 2415, uh, that unfinished business, and the amendments to Representative Ledger Fernandez, AMS, uh, uh, amendment in nature of a substitute. There's no objection. Let us now, uh, so ordered, let me now begin with uh, the amendment designated Herald number one. Uh, members, uh, let me remind members that under House uh, regulation must be visible to the chair in order to vote. Uh, and and uh, if a member is visible but without sound, you can visually vote with thumbs up, thumbs down uh, signal. Uh, members should answer the clerk by saying your name and then your vote. This allows the camera enough time to switch to you and uh, reduce the confusion and uh, expedite. The amendment no, is to have amendment number one. Roll call being recorded will be, be uh, requested. Somebody has got to mute their sound. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. 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 Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Yes. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Yes. Could you please tell me exactly what? Are we voting on the ANS that was submitted by uh, uh, Representative Ledger Fernandez? Without objection, Mr. Lowenthal. Uh, 
Uh, without objection, uh, that that is uh, we're voting on the unfinished business and the amendments to the ANS. Uh, and the without objection, the ANS uh, uh, is 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 the uh, part of the legislation now, uh, and uh, and we're proceeding with the with the recorded vote request. All right, then I vote. Uh, no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gosar. Gallego votes no. Yes. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Graves. Gallego votes no. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves uh, votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. I go votes no. <laughs> Mr. Heiss votes aye. Mr. Porter. Ms. Porter Ms. votes no. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leje Fernandez. No. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Duguet. Duguet votes no. Ms. Duguet votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. <laughs> Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicolas. Mr. San Nicolas votes no. Mr. Moore. Votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia is a no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell is a yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Ms. McCollum. Mr. Obernolte. Obernolte aye. Mr. Obernolte votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes no. Ms. Trahan votes no. Any uh, members that have not voted and wish to record their vote? Any members that wish to uh, change Mr. their Chairman, vote? Uh, Dingle. Mr. Chairman, Dingle votes aye. Ms. Dingle votes aye. Thank you. Any other members wish to record their vote? Mm -hmm. How is Ms. McCollum recorded? Ms. McCollum is not recorded. The way they ask for me. Ms. McCollum is not recorded. Okay. 
Sablon recorded? Mr. Sablon is not recorded. Um, Mr. Sablon, I understand votes aye. Uh, Mr. Sablon votes aye. What's going on here? I'm wearing a markup and y'all are proposing bad legislation. <laughs> hey, good morning, Mr. Grace. Good morning. Uh, does any member... Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Con this is Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal. Uh, yes, sir. We are voting on amendment number one to the Herald ANS one, huh? by Harrell. Yes. This is so. This is the Harrell amendment number one. Number one. Yes, I I continue to vote no. Okay, um, I'm, I'm Mr. Chairman. I may I change my vote, Mr. Sablan? May I? I would like to change my vote to a no. Mr. Sablan votes no. Thank you. Can Mrs. Dingle change her vote? Dingle, you recognized? No. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Where are we? There. If there is no one, uh, if there are no no other members uh, who wish to uh, to change their vote or record their vote, the vote is closed, and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 23. The amendment fails, and we move to amendment designated Rosendale number one. Uh, the clerk will please uh, call the roll. Mr. Grijalva? No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman? Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano? No. Mrs. T Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? Uh, for Alexa? No. Costa, no. Mr. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert? What did you just vote on? Uh, Second Amendment. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon? No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn? Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman? No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman? Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock? Mr. Gallego? Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar? Yes. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose? Mr. Graves. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Nagoose votes, votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. No. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes Brownlee no. votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Sauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl votes yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. No. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. 
Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Ms. McCone. And Mr. Obernolte. Obernolte aye. Mr. Obernolte votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Tri Mr. Han. Mr. Han votes no. Mr. Han votes no. We're not recorded, wish to be recorded, or we'll want to change the vote. If not, the vote is closed. And the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, so the A's are 17 and the nays are 23. The amendment fails. Uh, the next amendment is the Amendment designated uh, stopper number one, and the clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. It's no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Mr. Sablan. Sablon is a no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Yes. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. Mr. Graves. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. No. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. And Mr. Fulcher. Aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes aye. Mrs. Votes. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Tiffany. Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl votes yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia is a no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Ms. McCollum. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Tonko votes no. Mr. Lee. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Oh, yeah. Matsui votes no. Votes no. Ms. Mr. Han. Mr. Han votes no. Han votes no. Aye. Madam Clerk, how am I recorded? Uh, Mr. Nigus is not recorded. 
I vote no. Mr. Nicholas votes no. Madam Clerk, I'm I reported. Mr. Uh, Mr. Whitman. Mr. Whitman's not recorded. Uh, I vote yes. Mr. Whitman votes aye. How is Mr. Heiss re reporting? He's recorded. Is not recorded. Recorded. Mr. Heiss? Heiss votes yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Yeah. Madam Clerk, Obernolte, no. This is Gomer. Aye, Obernolte, aye. Mr. Obernolte votes aye. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Gomert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Any other members wish to be recorded or want to change their vote? If not, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, my vote wasn't recorded. To get votes, no. Mr. To get votes, no. Thank you, Representative Deget. Uh, if there's no one else, uh, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 17 and the nays are 23. The amendment fails. Uh, we move to amendment designated stubber number two. Mr. Grijalva? No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman? Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Which are the on? No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Yes. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Diego. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. Leger Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Carl Mr. votes aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicolas. Mr. Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia is a no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. <laughs> Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Ms. McCollum. <clears throat> Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Chairman, how am I recorded on this vote? Mr. Levin. Mr. Levin is not recorded. Uh, Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Bence. Uh, Bence votes yes. Mr. Bence votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. 
Ms. Tali votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes no. Ms. Trahan votes no. Are there uh, recorded? How's Mr. Mr. Whitman recorded? Mr. Gomer, Mr. Whitman, and with the clerk, please. Uh, how are they recorded? Mr. Gomer is recorded as an uh, I, and Mr. Whitman is recorded as an I. Very good. Thank you. Madam Clerk, Obernolte, I. Mr. Obernolte votes I. Are there uh, any members who wish to be recorded in their vote or to change their vote? Hearing none, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 17 and the nays are 22. The amendment fails and we move to uh, amendment designated stubber number three. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Uh, Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves, yes. Mr. Uh, Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. Leger Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Ms. McClellan. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes no. Ms. Trahan votes no. Are there any members who wish to be recorded uh, in their vote and, or have, want to change their votes? Mr. Uh, Chairman, how am I recorded? How's Mr. Gallegos recorded? Mr. Gallego is not recorded. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. How is Garcia re recorded? 
It's not recorded. Oh, is it going? Garcia said no. That's perfect. Mr. Yep. Garcia votes no. Robert votes yes if that's not recorded. Is there anyone Ms. else who wishes to? Okay. Ms. Bobert votes aye. Uh, Ms. Ding uh, for Ms. Dingle, we need a visual confirmation. Ms. Dingle? This isn't nice. There you go. Sorry. Thank you. Are there any other uh, members who wish to be recorded? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. This is the last stop of work. This is Gonzalez Colon, how I am reporter. Ms. Gonzalez Colon is recorded as an aye. Thank you. Will the clerk report, please? Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 23. The amendment fails, and we move to amendment designated Graves number one. And the clerk would please call the roll. Mr. Gray, Mr. Graves. Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye, aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Uh, Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mrs. Lo Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. Like, okay, well. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves, aye. Mr. Chairman, I have a parliamentary inquiry when the appropriate time. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. No. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Ms. Deguette. Deguette votes no. Ms. Deguette votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Carl votes aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto <coughs> votes no. Mr. Soto aye. votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Yeah.
Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. If any members not recorded that wish to be recorded or want to change their vote. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Gonzalez Colon, I vote aye. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Recorded. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Yes. I'm sorry, do you have case recorded? Mr. Case is not recorded? No, please. Mr. Case votes no. Uh, anyone else? Any other member seek to uh, change their vote or record their vote? If not, uh, the vote is closed and the clerk will report. Uh, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 22. The amendment fails. And Mr. Graves, you had an inquiry? I, I do, Mr. Nice. Chairman. Now, Mr. Chairman, I don't know the answer to this question, but is there anything under the rules that would allow the committee to UC uh, that if someone visually uh, showed themselves during a um, during a vote series that, that maybe they wouldn't have to keep doing it uh, considering the extraordinary circumstances. I understand. I understand. And thank you for your question. Uh, I was going to, uh, I would, I was uh, hoping that there would, there would be some consideration for an exception given the circumstances and uh and I still believe that that would follow and there would be no one on this committee that would be uh, object to that. But uh, the interpretation has been a strict one on that. On that, And uh, uh, hopefully that this will be the last time that we put someone through a discomfort when they shouldn't be going through that discomfort. And I appreciate your point, sir. Thank you. Yes. Can I get a mango dragon fruit star Starbucks refresher beverage? How is Trahan? I recorded. <laughs> I'd like a large cappuccino. <laughs> Peach cobbler. How's Mr. Head recorded, uh, Madam Clerk? She was, not recorded on the last she was not recorded on the last vote. Trahan votes no. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other uh, members wishing to record their vote or change their vote, the vote is closed. And the uh, clerk shall report. Mr. Rialba. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the first grade? Mr. Chair, on this, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 23. And the uh, amendment fails. The next amendment is designated Graves number two. Uh, if the clerk would uh, please call, call the roll. Uh, Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Rialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Com Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Sablon no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves. Yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leger Fernandez. No. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. 
Ms. Duguette votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Ms. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Carl votes yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicolas. No puedo dejar. Um, what amendment are we voting on? Graves number two. San Nicolas votes no. Mr. San Nicolas votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Ms. McCollum. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Benz. Mr. Benz votes yes. Mr. Benz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes no. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes no. Ms. Trahan votes no. Is there any members that uh, have not re- are not recorded their vote and wish to record their vote? Mr. Chairman, Bobert votes aye. Ms. Bobert votes aye. I am just sorry. Anyone else wish to record their vote or change their vote? Hearing none, uh, the vote is closed and the clerk will report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 15 and the nays are 23. The amendment fails, and uh, we, we move to adopt during an order in HR 2415 uh, as amended, uh, favorably reported to the House. A reported vote has been requested. Uh, and the clerk w- w- wanted to make a, a correction or a clarification before we start the recording vote. Okay, Chairman, can you repeat that, please? Uh, it was my understanding from staff that you needed to make a, a statement on, on, on one of the votes. It doesn't affect the vote, but a clarification. I was to recognize you. Well, if not, uh, if the clerk, if the clerk will uh, call the roll, please. Uh, the final passage adopting an order in HR 2415 uh, as amended from the reported house. Yes. I, I think we failed the vote on one amendment. Grave I thought he, I thought he pulled it. I'm sorry. I pulled, uh, I think he pulled 85 and 89. I, I think he pulled, may have pulled 88 and, or didn't pull it, but, um, Mr. Gosar requested a report of it on Well, that's right. That's correct. That's correct. I apologize for that. I, uh, since Mr. Graves didn't ask for it, I inadvertently. Uh, and that would be number 88, correct? Correct. A recorded vote has been uh, requested by Mr. Gosar on Graves 88. Uh, the clerk will please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Grialva. Mr. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Costa votes aye. Mr. Costa votes aye. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. 
Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. Is this on passage? This is on Graves Amendment number 88. And uh, can you tell me how the chair voted? I was just away. I voted, I voted no. Ten votes no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus. Mr. Graves. No. Negus votes no. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. Levin votes no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Leje Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Uh, Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Carl. Carl, yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Soto. Yes, no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. San Nicolas. San Nicolas votes yes. Mr. San Nicolas votes aye. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Ms. McCollum. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Matsui. Matsui Matsui votes no. Ms. Matsui votes no. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes no. Mr. Han votes no. Madam Clerk, how am I recorded? This is Sir Nicholas. Uh, Mr. San Nicholas, your vote is uh, as recorded as aye. You have to count on Bobert you guys. votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Nicholas um, changes his vote to no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. No. Are there any other members that wish to be recorded or change their vote? If not, uh, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Did the clerk show report?
Do you have any recorded yet? Yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, the undisclosed DAs are 16 and the nays are 21. The uh, amendment fails, and uh, that is it with the request uh, that completes the request for recorded votes on amendments. Uh, we now have a recorded vote request uh, on the final pa uh, passage adopting an order in HR 2415 as amended, favorably reported to the House. At this point, the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. Mr. Yes. Chairman. Mr. Westerman. Was, was there a vote on the uh, amendment nature of the substitute already? It was at the beginning of the meeting where, without objection, I, I stated that, that the, that the debate and the amendments would be that uh, ANS was, uh, without objection, accepted. Uh, that we proceeded from that point forward. Okay, so we're voting on final passage now. Then. Exactly. Okay. As amended with the ANS. In it. Right. I'm a no, Madam Clerk. Okay, Mr. Grialva. I, I vote yes. Mr. Grialva votes uh, aye. And Mr. Westerman? No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mrs. Napolitano? Aye. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? Costa votes aye. Mr. Costa votes aye. Mr. Wilmert? Uh, no. Votes no. Mr. Sablon? Sablon votes aye. Mr. Sablon votes aye. Mr. Lamborn? Lamborn votes no. Mr. Oh, Lamborn man. votes no. Mr. Huffman? Aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Whitman? Whitman votes no. Mr. Whitman votes no. Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. McClintock? Mr. Gallego? Gallego votes aye. Mr. Gallego votes aye. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Negus? Aye. Aye, Mr. Graves? Madam, Madam Clerk, if the members would suspend uh, an advice of counsel and to uh, be assured... And to assure Mr. Westerman, so that question does not become a, a question down the road, uh, we will suspend the vote, and we need to uh, deal with Ms. Ledger Fernandez's uh, amendment in the nature of a substitute and record that vote, and and uh, and uh, for the record and for uh, for 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 the legislation as it moves forward. And uh, um, I'm suspending the vote now. We can uh, reinitiate it, but uh, I would at this point uh, let Ms. Uh, Representative Ledger Fernandez's ANS uh, amendment in nature of substitute uh, would be the uh, the vote that we are requesting. Uh, I would assume that that would be a recorded vote, Mr. Westerman, and as such, we could proceed that way if that is uh, uh, that is the point. Uh, Mr. ANS Chairman, okay. we're we're okay with a voice vote on that. Okay. Uh, Diana, Ms. Ledger Fernandez is uh, uh, amendment in nature of a substitute and uh, as amended. Uh, anybody? All those in favor, please uh, unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying no. 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 The, uh, the ayes have it. The ayes have it, and the uh, the amendment is agreed to. And uh, thank you, Mr. Westerman, for uh, uh, your help on that. Uh, let me now uh, go back to the clerk uh, for uh, for the vote on final passage. Appreciate it, Mr. Graves. No. Mr. Graves votes no. Mr. Levin. Levin votes aye. Mr. Levin votes aye. Mr. Heiss? Heiss votes no. Mr. Heiss votes no. Ms. Porter? Yes. Ms. Porter votes aye. Mrs. Radawagon? Yes. Mr. Webster? Ms. Velasquez? Velasquez votes aye. 
Mr. Velasquez, both sides. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Ms. Deget. Deget votes aye. Ms. Deget votes aye. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes no. Mr. Fulcher votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mrs. Dingle. <clears throat> Uh, Dingle votes aye. Mrs. Dingle votes aye. Mr. Tiffany? Mr. McEachin? Mr. Carl? Carl, no. Mr. Carl votes no. Mr. Soto? Soto votes yes. Mr. Soto votes aye. Mr. Rosendale? Rosendale votes no. Mr. Rosendale votes no. Mr. San Nicholas? San Nicholas votes yes. Mr. San Nicholas votes aye. Mr. Moore? Moore votes no. Mr. Moore votes no. Mr. Garcia. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes no. Ms. Harrell votes no. Mr. Case. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes no. Mrs. Bobert votes no. Ms. McCollum. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes aye. Mr. Tonko votes aye. Ms. Talib. Talib votes yes. Ms. Talib votes aye. Ms. Matsui. Matsui votes aye. Ms. Matsui votes aye. Ms. Trahan. Trahan votes aye. Ms. Trahan votes aye. Clerk, how am I recorded? This is Representative Nagus. Mr. Nagus, you recorded as an aye. Thank you. Um, well, Madam Clerk, how am I recorded? This is Leisure Fernandez. Miss Leisure Fernandez, you're not recorded. Leisure Fernandez definitely votes yes. Miss Leisure Fernandez votes aye. Huffman votes aye. How is Case recorded? Mr. Huffman has been recorded as an aye. Mr. Case is not recorded. Aye. Mr. Case votes aye. Are there any members that uh, wish to uh, record their vote or change their vote? Obernolte, no. Mr. Obernolte. Mr. Obernolte votes no. Any other members? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 22 and the nays are 17. The HR 2415 as amended uh, is, favor uh, is favorably. Uh, reported to the house and, and uh, with that, uh, I wanna thank uh, the members for this part of the meeting and uh, I want to, uh, I don't think we have any additional recorded votes left going forward, if I'm not mistaken, unless someone asks for something later, but at this point uh, with the cooperation of the ranking member, Mr. Westerman and other members of the committee, it appears that we have worked out an agreement on four, four bills scheduled for markup today. Before we begin, does any member see time to speak on any of the bills in the unanimous consent uh, package part of the agenda? Mr. Chairman, Rep. Soto. Mr. Soto, you're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thanks. I just wanted to thank um, both the chairman and uh, ranking member Westerman for your support on this uh, key bill to help with the Seminole Tribe of Florida and a simple fee simple land transfer and a yield back. Thank you. And uh, this is an ongoing effort that you've had since you've been in Congress and congratulations on getting on the committee and hopefully quickly to the floor. Uh, anyone else? 
If not, uh, as we've done before, Mr. Chair, I'm going to make. Uh, yes. This uh, this is uh, Nancy uh, on. Uh, HR 2415 Graves number one, Mrs. Trahan was not counted uh, before the vote was closed. So the final count is 16 nays to 22 nays. Thank you. And as we've done before, I'll make a single UC motion to discharge the agreed upon bills. I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee for Indigenous Peoples of the United States be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 164, a bill regarding the Seminole Tribe of Florida, which we heard Representative Soto speak to. He is a sponsor of that legislation. H.R. 438, a bill to extend the deadline for report by the Alice Spotted Bear and Walter Sobloff, Sobloff Commission on Native Children. Uh, uh, Mr. Don Young's piece of legislation H.R. 2641, the Pacific Northwest uh, Pump Storage Hydropower Development Act. Uh, and I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on Water, Oceans, and Wildlife also be discharged from further consideration on H.R. 2641, the Pacific Northwest Pump Storage Hydropower Development Act. And I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources be discharged discharged from further consideration of H.R. 1146, the Community Partnership Act. And without objection, so ordered. Now I will ask uh, unanimous consent that the following bills be adopted in order to be reported as described to the House of Representatives. H.R. 164, H.R. 438, H.R. 1146, H.R. 2641, uh, without objection, so ordered. Without objections, the motions to reconsider are laid upon the table. Uh, I want to thank all the members for, for today, and in particular, uh, uh, my uh, gratitude to Ms. Stingle for attending our meeting. Uh, under difficult circumstances, much appreciated. Uh, and uh, all members shall have two days in which to file supplemental additional uh, minority or dissenting views. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make necessary technical and conforming changes to the bills ordered reported today subject to the approval of the minority. I also ask unanimous consent for any bill ordered reported today with amendment that the bill be considered reported with an amendment to strike out all after the enacting clause and inserting the text of the bill with the perfecting amendments adopted in committee. Without objection, so ordered. Again, thank uh, Ranking Member Westerman and other members of the committee for help in moving this markup along. Uh, there is no further business before the committee. And with that, the committee is adjourned. And thank you very much.